The Chinese <laughs> food order tonight was fire. It was really good. <laughs> One of my best. Thank you. Can, he made can, it. Can you make that clip for me? On today's part of my take, we have Greg Olson and George Kittle interviewed together for Tight End University. Greg both, Kittle. Greg Kittle. Yeah. Greg and Greg, both uh, good friends of the program, longtime friends. We had them on. Also, uh, Greg Olson, we asked him about his son who just had a heart transplant. Very emotional, but uh, great listen. So check it out. We are going to talk about the death of the process. We're going to talk about Game 7 Bucks Nets. We're going to talk a little hockey. We're going to talk a little U.S. Open. Bryson DeChambeau. Ooh, that's yeah. good. That's, that's good. a little preview for what we're going to talk Big about. Cat. I call him Dyson DeChambeau because he blows. Oh, damn. That's just, listen. Buckle up for more. We also have uh, Monday reading, and uh, Billy's got his recap of the show. So, Pack Pack Show, we're brought to you by our friends at Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Silverado is strong, advanced, dependable, hardworking. Silverado is dependable like the people who drive them. The design is big, bold, and commanding, and this truck turns heads. It's a partner with grit and determination. Anything is possible, and Silverado is a partner in that. So, if you're looking to tailgate, haul, Towing, off-roading, ooh, towing maybe your boat to the lake all summer long, moving day, helping out your friend or family member, road trips, whatever it may be, the Silverado is there for you. It is strong. It's advanced. It is the Chevy Silverado. So go check it out right now. And we're still running our deal. If you whisper very softly into a Chevy Silverado dealership salesperson, you say PMT uh, or take. Uh, you will get $100 off your Chevy Silverado, a free tank of gas, and a cup of hot coffee. All on us. Just whisper the words PMT or take, and you will get the greatest truck that's ever been created, the Chevy Silverado. So thank you to Chevy Silverado, our wonderful sponsor. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Today is Monday, June 21st, and the process is dead. R.I.P. R.I.P. We had a good run. We had a good run. This was going to be the postseason where we judge whether Oof. or not processes actually work. Turns out they don't. Well, it was a, you know what? It was a legacy game for uh, just baskets, being able to shoot. Well, I was Turns gonna... out that if you can shoot you're probably going to win an NBA playoff series. I was going to say, I I didn't think it would catch up to him, but it finally did. Ben Simmons just refusing to shoot a basket into, a basketball into a basket (coughs) in a basketball game. It ended up, that matters. Well, he ended up not dunking. He's afraid of dunking too. Uh, well, I thought, well, well, I thought that if he if he had the opportunity to go up with like a nice solid two footed, two handed slam dunk from inside the protected circle, I didn't think he'd be afraid of the basket in those circumstances. Wait, but hold on, PFT. Rim protector Trey Young was there. True. So Good point. that was that's a scary thing. No, actually, I'd like to now go back on my take that he should try dunking free throws because that wouldn't work either. Uh, no, nothing works. He he can't, he is allergic. I've never seen anyone. Just be like, I am not going to shoot under any circumstances. So we got a lot to talk about. But let's start with some Ben Simmons stats. So we talked about this on Thursday's show. But Ben Simmons now officially finished the last four games of this series without attempting a single field goal in the fourth (laughs) quarter. That's your point guard. Honestly impressive. That's your point guard. He attempted three field goals in the fourth quarters of this entire series. Two of them in the first. He did finish perfect three for three. So there's mm-hmm. one nice spin zone. Uh, he, because he's now out of the playoffs, Ben Simmons has the lowest free throw percentage in a single playoffs in NBA history. So he beats out Shaq. He was 34.2%. Shaq's worst season uh, playoff history was 37.4%. So that's 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 the uh, another bad stat. And then finally, I mean Ben Simmons, I don't he, he, did you see afterwards Doc Rivers was asked like can he be a point guard on a championship team? He's like I don't know the answer to that. We'll see. I will see. Yeah, no, that's not great. It's not great when your head coach is saying that like do you think that you can win an NBA game with Ben Simmons as your point guard? And I f- MVP candidate Ben Simmons. And I feel really bad for Sixers fans. I, I know that Hank we're going to give Hank a chance to just rip them apart which he he will. I honestly feel bad for Ben Simmons. 
No, like, I don't. Imagine no, making it. I don't. Imagine making no. it to this this stage in your professional career, only to just discover your one glaring weakness, which is you can't score. No, I, I, no, 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 no. He can't shoot. He, he no, he, he, he no, he's afraid shoot. of shooting. He, yeah. No, I don't think he physically can shoot. I think that he is, in fact, right-handed, and Kevin O'Connor has apparently been on this for a while. No, he's a lot of people think that he's right-handed. No, he's non. There's he's like, non-dominant. Yes, neither hand. He doesn't have a hand that works. No hands that work for Ben Simmons it's, and shoot it. He. I always thought that that uh, saying the Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott quote didn't really make that much sense. He actually proves that you do, in fact, miss a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. Yeah, like saying Ben Simmons can't shoot is actually wrong because. Well, no, it's right in that he. When you say he can't shoot, you're saying he's a bad shooter. He can't shoot in that he he mentally cannot make himself shoot. Do you think he's got that that uh, disease, the brain thing, where you're afraid of holes? You remember when the iPhones came out and everybody pretended to be afraid of the camera? Oh, for like that a week? was like the even. No, that's tryptophobia. Uh, yeah, tryptophobia. Right? He might be afraid of he holes. He needs to get hit in the, <sighs> the eye, so there's three rims. Exactly, like LeBron. I, it's that clip of him passing. Of the ball when he was standing under the hoop with Trey Young coming over, who he's got like a foot on, was just it's insane. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that happens in a basketball game. Hank, the floor is yours. This quote just came out like a few minutes ago, so you probably didn't see it. But Joel Embiid said, I'll be honest, I thought the turning point was when we, I don't know how to say it, is when we had an open shot and we made one free throw. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, th- and, and that makes perfect sense. You can't have a guy out there. Who does? That would be like if we went out there. I, I know. I know. Obviously, Ben Simmons is a great defender. I'm not knocking him there. He had 11 assists, like he or 14 or no. Uh, he had sorry, 13 assists. So he's doing stuff that have an impact on the game. But if you put any of us in an NBA game, we would pass up open looks because we would be afraid of getting blocked. Mm-hmm. Like we would do the same thing. The only person that's compared, like Rajon Rondo, early in his career was kind of like that, where he just didn't shoot or look for offense, but he also would at least shoot layups and, like, you know, if he needed to get a shot, he would get a shot. Yeah, yeah like go even if it was ugly, the, he if would. If you Joe have Kim an open Noah, layup, you should probably consider taking the open layup. Yeah, Joe Kim Noah would not look at the hoop when he was like at the at the foul line, but he would still just to keep him honest, do his weird motion. I it's just. It's absolutely like I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. And listen, we also need to put some blame on Doc Rivers, who like we we went through that on Thursday, but he's has not a great history outside of the one championship. And Embiid, look, Embiid is a great, great player, and he's the guy who you're going to build around if you're the Sixers. But he was so sloppy, mm-hmm. like he just he's just a sloppy guy. He loves falling down. I think his he, hands, he turnovers. I, I think his hands might be too big. He, that he might be the sloppy. issue. There's just he's all fingers. He's yeah. just doing a lot of poking. And there were yeah there were a few times where you know it was clear that he was going to be the person that was going to provide all the offense. And if you if you make him drive to the hole in the fourth quarter, he's going to like bounce it off his shins every time. Like I I think he has a little mental issue too. It's like they built an entire team out of Chuck Knobloch's. We forgot how to throw the ball to first base. Except except the only guy who could play is Doc Rivers uh son, son or or uh his son-in-law who's out there playing in Seth Curry who actually was playing well, but that's pretty much it. And mm-hmm. he was the one guarding Kevin Herter. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, who, Kevin Herter. We got to talk off. about the Hawks. But I, we got to. I want to say one thing, though, for the Sixers fans, because I actually. Enough time has passed, an hour has passed since the end of the game. I actually think that if you're this, a Sixers fan, in a weird way, this is for the good. And I know that that makes no sense on face value because you can go through the entire process and you can point to a million different things that went wrong. You wish you had Jason Tatum, all these things. You you know, you wish you kept Jimmy Butler, traded for James Harden. But at the end of the day, this was going to happen no matter what. Ben Simmons does not – he does not want to shoot basketballs. But they've lost so much value with him. Of course. Of course. But, but it's, it's better you find out in such a spectacular failure than to have it be like a slow, like, and, death from a thousand paper cuts where he kind of doesn't show up for series at a time. It's better that it happens in a great big way that's impossible to ignore. But and, he's so young he could go somewhere else and be nasty. But and mm-hmm. some, someone will think – like, I think he still will have trade value because someone will think, I can fix that. I can make him better because he still has elite levels to his game. It's just the whole point of shooting a basketball into a hoop is the game, and he just doesn't want to do that. He so, might be the best player in the NBA if there wasn't a basket. Yes, if you, if you, if actually if it was keep away. If it was if it was Hoosiers when they're not allowed. No, they didn't get to play with a basketball mm-hmm. when that in that scene when they got to pra- when they weren't able to practice the basketball. The four, cl- the four corners era. 
Yeah, yeah Ben be Simmons would be elite. Mm-hmm. I just I think that if you're a Sixers fan, in a weird, deep down way, I know how terrible this is, and that was truly horrific the way it all unfolded and the way they lost these games. I I really do think there's a silver lining of like this wasn't going to work, and now at least it has to change. Yeah, and also if you're a Philadelphian, you're. Your native uh, mindset is always just being pissed off at your sports teams. Pop right? in the Super Bowl, this, this is This is like, you're like a duck in water if you're a Philly fan because now you get to call into Ant, Big Ant and Angelo and be like, you got to blow the whole thing up, Big Ant. I'll take my answer off the air. You know, like, this is what you've practiced for your whole life. Yes. If, if Philadelphia became an elite sports city, I mean, well, let's think about it this way. After they win a Super Bowl, they, they grease up. Their uh, their light poles, people climb up them. Who knows how many lives were saved by Ben Simmons not being able to shoot it's a true. foul shot? It's true. Yeah, yeah. If you're a Sixers fan, if you're a Philly fan right now, you pop in the Super Bowl DVD. You think about Chase Utley and Jimmy Rollins, and you just kind of. It's actually for the better because this was never going to work, and you hope that you get someone who can make Joel Embiid not have to uh, turn the ball over in every fourth quarter and fall on the ground because he's the only offense. Mm-hmm. Shout out, you know what else, you know what else yeah. Philadelphia people should do? What? No. At don't. least be happy that uh, they don't have to play the super team. You know the Nets. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They got to beat them. I, I do want to give credit to the Hawks. Kevin Herter, max contract right now. Sign it. That was a legacy game for him. And so Trey Young was terrible tonight. We can all agree. I. The, it was probably the most fascinating game to watch in that it wasn't a very like great game. Game seven, Nets Bucks was a great game. This this game though was so fascinating because you had one guy in Ben Simmons who refused to shoot, and then you had Trey Young who was having a terrible terrible night and still was like fuck it I'm shooting mm-hmm. every shot from wherever, and you know he ends up like it wasn't a great night for him he did still make it happen with the assist but the Hawks in general no one picked them to go to the Eastern Conference Final they they are a great story they're like. I, I, I'm sitting here and I'm still thinking like the Sixers were a better team, but the Hawks deserve to win this series. They were resilient. Like they came back from those games that they won where it was just horrific for the Sixers and they deserve all the credit. And Trey Young's a superstar. And we get to see another couple of weeks of Trey Young doing just silencing crowds. The emergence of Trey Young, the troll, has been my favorite part of these playoffs, with the exception of the Suns and Four guy. But like I, I love watching people get pissed off at Trey Young because he seems to actually enjoy playing that role of being the heel. Oh, yeah. He's really good at it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to, like, I I was getting all worked up for Nets Sixers uh, next round, so I'm trying to figure out ways where I'm going to pretend that I'm actually excited about Hawks Bucks. Um, Kevin Herter, sweet nickname. They call him Red Velvet. That's great. Which is amazing. If you're a redheaded player, you're either going to have the best nickname of all time or the worst. Yeah. It's, it's like the most, uh, like, uh, it's an extremely polarizing thing if you have a ginger that's good at sports because you either have to, like, just call him, like, the Red Mamba, like Scalabrini, but Red Velvet is just, it's the smoothest Smooth. nickname. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it, they just, they deserve a ton of credit because I just, I didn't expect this and I was definitely wrong. And Trey Young is, like, having that type of guy on your team who is, even if it's not going well for him, he's like, one, he's going to help in other ways, but two, he's never going to stop. He has the exact polar opposite confidence of Ben Simmons. Mm -hmm. He could miss 100 shots in a row, and he will still take a three-pointer from the logo and be like, this one's going in. Yeah, next one. Ben Simmons will pass up a million shots in a row, and on the millionth one, he'll be like, yep, still going to pass it up, too scared to shoot. Yeah, we got sweet Lou Will, too. Even Pepper Lou. John Collins just jumping all over people. I mean, they're a fun team, and it's. I'll talk myself into it. And the the Hawks crowds have been awesome. Like, yeah, we're we're gonna get into this. It's good. It's good. It's, it's good. good. Everything's I, fine. I would lo- would have liked to see the Nets, but it's good. It's good, guys. Mm-hmm. Hank, do you have any last last thoughts for Philadelphia fans out there? I know that you. It's kind of been like a tough love situation between them. Have you grown to respect them? Well, yeah, I mean, I think they tried their hardest. It's been, you know, like 20 years since they made the Eastern Conference Finals. They were so close this year, and I think eventually they're, they're going to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. You're going to put your reputation on I do line? believe, I truly believe, you know, as much as I've said bad things about Philly, it's only been, you know, my honest opinion, and I do believe eventually they will make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay. So that's, you know... That's, Just trust the process. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can go to bed at night being like, yeah, a few more pieces here and there, a different coach. At some point... It's going to happen. A bunch of injuries to other teams and other players. We can make it. Yeah. I wonder if Bogdanovich is. It's not like Atlanta was losing a starter or anything and uh, one of their best bench players. Yeah. But, fuck, man. 
Bogdanovich is definitely. You know what's funny is I, I always forget Tony Snell is on the Hawks, and uh, if Tony Snell, if like the Hawks play the Suns and it's Tony Snell versus campaign in the in the finals, that would be very funny. Yeah. Um, for me, just me personally, pretty much. But the Hawks deserve credit. I want to give. I want to make sure that we stop, pause, and say that this team deserves a ton of credit because they don't. They just haven't given up. Like they have been. People pick the Knicks. People pick the Sixers, and they just fucking. If they have to win it ugly, they win it ugly. If they have to win it with Trey Young hitting every shot, they win it that way. Bogdanovich, all those guys. Kevin Herter is like, fuck, man. The Kevin Herter game. It mm-hmm. happened. That happened. Kevin Herter game happened. Um, all right, let's talk Nets Bucks. So I was there. It was an awesome game, incredible game. Uh, it was an all time silent arena moment at the end. Flashing forward. So the Kevin Durant shot to end regulation. That doesn't happen if it wasn't for the turnover right before that. Yes. Like the game was pretty much over at yes. that point. But it was that I still don't know how they didn't like, I guess they, you don't want to bring a double with like six seconds, but he, it was so like, I've never been in a moment where it's like, he's going to make the shot no matter what. It's just whether it's a three or a two. I thought it was a three when he hit it. Yeah. Right. It, well, I, I, I did not. I never thought it was a three, although the um, I posted a clip on my Instagram stories. The Jumbotron said three-pointer. That's tough. Which sucks. And they brought out the ropes yeah. for for the front row so, to like for keep everyone off. Yeah. And, and, and then I was like, wait, that was definitely a two-pointer. But did, did he actually change into smaller shoes right after that? No. Or was somebody joking about that? I think that was a okay, joke. Okay, they pulled the wool over my ass. Um, but that, that end of the game shot. I, that one was an all time. We've talked about the moments that, like the sounds that happen in arenas, the shriek, the stunned silence. To have Kevin Durant airball the three pointer after an unbelievable game where he put his, the nets on his back and Blake too, but he did everything for them. Everyone looked around like, wait, there wasn't a foul? That like, shot what goes happened? In. What, or it had to be blocked. Yeah, like, is this something. And there's only 0.3 seconds left. So something's wrong. Like there's it's, basically everyone's like, no, 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 this isn't the ending. Like, turn the turn the machines back That's, on. We got to replay. You that. know what that is? That's the Buffalo Wild Wingsification of sports that we're seeing. Yeah. So like, anytime a, a big team uh, experiences heartbreak like that, you do have that second because you think maybe we're gonna get bailed out. If it's soccer, it's like maybe VAR saw something different. Right. Like a goal is never really a goal until it's like cemented in stone. But on a play like that, it's just like it ends with a whimper. It's like. Okay, what next? We, Something else has to happen now. We talk about it all the time with football when you have a big play and you just sit there on a fourth down and you're like, so the flag's coming? Yeah, you and wait And it just doesn't. It. You wait that beat. That beat happened in the entire arena and everyone's like, oh, wait, it's over. You wait for the refs to huddle up and then the announcer's like, I wonder what they're talking about. And then you have another 15 seconds where they're right. just actually saying, no, there's 0. .3 seconds left, <laughs> yeah. not 0. .4 seconds. Yeah, the game is fully over. Yeah. So that was the, only the third time in Game 7 history. This was a stat from our friend Kirk Goldsberry. Third time in Game 7 history dueling 40-point uh, performances, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. The other times were uh, Paul Pierce versus LeBron 2008 and Sam Jones versus Oscar Robinson 1963, which we obviously remember that game. Uh, I weirdly, I think Kevin Durant like gained from this. Oh yeah, I mean the shot at the end of regulation was huge, and just the the way this like Harden going down, Kyrie going down, the game five, this game forty eight points where he just was so incredible. I think maybe not gained because obviously he doesn't go to the finals, he doesn't go to the conference finals, but I think people appreciate Kevin Durant more than they ever have watching him play without. Other players and 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 being as incredible as he is. and he had an all time sad face too after that shot. I know. I felt so bad for him. He looked like a puppy. He thought that the machines were broken yeah, he too. Thought, he's like, like that's every, not where my shot. I'm does. telling you, it was the weirdest feeling. Everyone was looking around like, wait, that's it? Well, because he tried to do the exact same shot that right. he pulled off earlier, and you're like, no, I already saw this. This shot goes in. Right. I saw it. It happened like five minutes ago. This that shot went in the basket. Kevin Durant doesn't airball a shot. That's probably what he was thinking. He was like, Kevin Durant doesn't airball this. Kevin, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was tough. It was tough to see Blake's performance. I think he. he I, how many times does Blake dive on the floor during Dude, one game? He was awesome. He, he loves the floor. He was grit and grit and grind. Yeah. All night long. And the Bucks deserve a ton of credit. Giannis, obviously, this is going to be. It might be their best chance to win a title, especially now that it's the Hawks. No, no offense to the Hawks, but. I think people would pick the Bucks over the Hawks. Um, it also was a great lesson in it doesn't 
it doesn't matter if you suck as long as you can make some big shots at the end because mm-hmm. there was a moment going into the fourth quarter where Drew Holiday was two for 17 and Chris Middleton was four for 16. And they both, like, Drew Holiday had a John Starks game going. He was terrible. Mm-hmm. He was terrible. He ends up going three for six in his last six field goal attempts, and Chris Middleton goes five for 10 in his last 10. And it's like, that's. You can suck for three quarters, and that was kind of the difference is those guys started making some shots Mm -hmm. and helping Giannis out, and that made the difference in the entire game. I also like Coach Buds. Coach Buds has this look on his face all the time like he's – He's got resting, scared face. He's just terrified of everything that's happening. He makes good moves. I think was it a few years ago where we were uh, like lamenting the loss of Joe Prunty? Yeah, because he was an all-time face guy. Yeah, and I think Buds is an, a worthy heir apparent to that. He looks like a dad who's coming down to tell the kids at the sleepover to like be quiet, but he's also a little intimidated by the kids. Like there's one, like he's like I'm one a, big kid. Yeah, down I'm there. a little like they might kick my ass, but he's got the like kind of messy hair, uh-huh. the messy facial hair. He's barely slept and he's like hey can you guys keep it you know what keep having your fun i'll just go back upstairs you are like a dad that gets called in for like a parent teacher uh like counseling session and he's not sure what the news is going to be but he does know that his son very much did not want him to go to this meeting he's just tired he's just just tired he's tired and he's scared (laughs) he's he just looks terrified all the time but i love coach buds i i I like the bucks i like their fans that's the only thing about trey young is like i don't know if trey young can muster up hatred towards the city of milwaukee they seem to be kind of like, uh, I think like the Tra- sons of the East. I think Trey Young can do that. I think that's what makes Trey Young special. I think he can get, muster it up for anyone. Like they don't re- he can play the respect card. Every I single think Trey person. Young is going to muster up respect for just everybody in the media. It, I feel like we're overdue for him to be like, no one said that we could be here. They all said that we were going to lose in the first round, which is true. Yep. I think, yeah, we, we definitely said that. Um, so he'll just play like us versus the world card right now. Yeah, the um, from the from a like just a storyline perspective, it also is great. Like the Nets losing, them coming back next year, they'll probably bring everyone back. They'll be a super team, but it does feel like they have to earn it a little. More. James Harden could also get really fat this offseason because with a hamstring, he's going to have to give that rest for probably like a month, there, month that, and a half. That first half, I forget how much it sucks to watch James Harden play basketball when he's just looking to get fouled mm-hmm. and he's not looking to like do anything but get fouled fouled i actually it was they got to get a little bit more brooklyn with their game i think michael Ooh, rapaport was right yeah how, how do we add like an element of brooklyn-ness to the brooklyn nets true i i had a um like one of those moments post-covid where you realize how much you miss the little things i walking out of the arena i just was talking about like james harden fouls and i got into like a spirited debate with a complete stranger about whether it's James Harden's fault for trying to flop or if it's the ref's fault for allowing that and like be, you know letting him do it uh-huh. and then giving him free throws all the time and it was great it was like man this was fun like we were, you know when you like accidentally hit the same pace as a stranger walking down the street yep. you're like we're just walking together for a couple blocks here that's a major dude's rock situation yeah and i was just like you know what th- that was cool all right see ya have we had the take yet that James Harden gets injured because he jumps into fouls like he jumps at weird angles. Yeah, I mean he doesn't get injured that much, but yeah, he's. But this year, I got corrected by that. This year, yeah, yeah. I'm got, going off what I see right now, Big Cat. And what I yeah. see right now is a very injured James Harden. It was. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's weird having both the Nets and the Sixers when everyone thought that it was going to be like a collision course. Yeah. To have that be out. But hey, Hawks and Bucks, we're going to fucking enjoy the hell out of it. David Stern would never let this happen. Ever. 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 Adam Silver was definitely like, uh, what's the name of our mayor here in New York City? Uh, de Blasio? De Blasio. Yeah. No, uh, Warren Wilhelm, right? De, de Blasio. He definitely was looked like de Blasio sitting at home with his Nets jersey and Nets hat on for yep. Game 7. Yeah. like, let's go, boys. We got this. God damn. I, just, I, I wanted Blake to get a chip. I did, too. But you know what? I just wanted to see Dax on Hopefully the victory he stays. parade with him. Hopefully he stays. Hopefully, you know, we're going to get him on this summer. Hopefully he stays. Hopefully he gets the chip. Like I said, he, they're earning it now. Yeah. Is they're he a fully free agent again? Yes. Yes. That's and exciting. Yeah. This Especially w- Blake, year, Blake, Blake of the Year season. It really is. comes back for two days and you start mumbling your words. Also, this was the curse of Lucky, the leprechaun. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. You could say that the Celtics beat the Nets. How close do you think Kyrie was uh, to coming back and playing? Probably like 95%? And he's just like, nah, I don't want to. He probably, yeah, he definitely could have if he wanted to. <laughs> he's probably waiting, for the, he's probably waiting for the the conference finals. I teed that up for you. Uh, okay. Actually, was Reggie Miller right? <laughs> 
Yeah, the like rest, if, if yeah. they had rested James. Kevin Durant and James Harden, forget. Do we, as Kevin, a nation, owe Reggie Miller an apology? Yeah, we, yeah Reggie, yeah. I'm sorry. Kevin Durant ran out of gas in the overtime, which he absolutely should have because he played every minute and he put the team on his back. But yeah, he could have used a couple extra minutes of rest or a couple days. Yeah, a couple of days rest. of rest. Um, all right, our sons are wagon. No Chris Paul, no Kawhi, so I think that evens it out. Devin Booker was insane. He scored what he had eleven points going into halftime, and I think he ended with forty. Also, the the Clippers game six on Friday night was one of the craziest swings in basketball I've ever seen. Yeah, yes, it was crazy. And then you, a, after the game, when they were interviewing Man, because it was the Terrence Man game, right? Yep, it was the Terrence Man game. They were interviewing him and Paul George at the same time. Paul George with one of the best spin zones that I've ever seen. He was like, you know, I always knew that Terrence had this in him because I look at him, I'm like. You know what? He reminds me a lot of me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Paul George is is, is uh, like a Hall of Fame. Don't let him answer a question for too long. Time. <laughs> like if he if he gets to if he gets to more than thirty seconds, he's going to say something not like terrible, just ridiculous. No, that was I loved it because <laughs> I I could see the wheels turning in that, his head. It's like, dude, yeah, protect that ego. I think that's how playoff P happened. I yep. think he was just answering a question. And he got too far down the road. And he was like, "Yeah, they call me playoff P." And then Balmer's pumped to be there. Balmer is Dude, Bal- Balmer is the is the living <laughs> definition of the word pumped. Yes, he's just pumped all day, every day. What's up? If I was a billionaire like Steve Balmer and the coach wasn't wearing a mask, like I, I feel like I just wouldn't be wearing a mask either. He like, might, if I own the team and I was sitting courtside. I, okay, I get the, I get looks the like he's feeling wearing the he's shittiest, got, like most uncomfortable mask. Here's my theory. It looks uncomfortable. I think he's got like some sort of immune. Issue maybe not him, but maybe somebody close to him because he's the only person that's wearing I, a big mask. I also think that when you get to a certain level of richness, you are like, my life is so sweet, I don't want to die True. under any circumstances. Like, like I would, I if I were his level of rich, I'd probably wear a mask all the time because I'd be like, you know what? Even a common cold, like th- this life I got right now is so fucking sweet. I'm not giving it up for anything. He also probably, like, a billionaire walks into a room with the uh, unwashed masses. He's like, I don't know what these pores have. Right, exactly. Like, so I don't have he's access gotta, to all the future medicine I do. He's got he's to gotta make sure he keeps it clean. It is a very uncomfortable mask. His hug of Paul George was very funny, though. He was just... It's been a very, it's been a very funny hug playoff. Steve Nash and, yeah. and Kevin Durant after Game 5 was awesome. Did you see that video of Steve Ballmer just clapping it up in a room, just going, yes, 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 yeah. just sweating through his shirt? He's, like, he, he wakes up sweating. He makes Chris Berman look like the driest man in America. Yeah, I think the shower just never takes for him. No. Shout out White Sox, Dave. Um, so yeah, the, the Suns, Devin Booker game. It was a Devin Booker game. All I'm saying is Suns and four. Suns and four. Devin Booker game. Although, Suns fans, we got to I saw there was a new fight video. Let's not make this a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, this one looked a little less chill. Yeah, this one wasn't. The, we saw the like full a, video. Like a beat down. Like you were a half second away from a curb stomp. Yeah, it was It was bad. It was bad. The Sons and Four original video, if you watch the whole video, the Sons and Four guy had a full beer poured on his head, which shout out the guy who got beat up, who did a post interview. I, I actually respect. I've swung. I now like that guy. Because to get beat up, go viral, and then be like, you know what? I want my name and face more out there. Mm-hmm. That takes a level of uh, like lack of self awareness that everyone should aspire to have. No, this guy just likes having his name on the internet. Yeah, and he like he likes opening up a, an app like Twitter and seeing his own face on it. Right. To him, that's fame. Rough and, and rowdy. Anything you can do to stick around, fame. He should actually try to fight Sons and Four guy, Rough and Rowdy. We would do it. We'd put on I, that fight for I, sure. I liked how he was saying that I just got scratched on my nose and never actually got punched. On it. Yeah, you can so I, see it. Like, I'd have a black eye. I don't have a black eye. You give eye. me another week, I'm going to think he actually won the fight. Yes, yes. But, uh, yeah, the the Suns, they're a wagon. Do we need to ask, though, like, whose man's is that team? Is it Chris Paul's team or is it Devin Booker's team? I think Who's it's, Batman, who's Robin? I think, I think it's, they have the perfect age disparity where Chris Paul's old enough where he's just like, yeah, like, step under my wing, young guys. Who's, right. bat, who's Batman and who's Catwoman not getting her pussy eaten? I think Devin Booker's Bonk. Batman. I e yeah, but he also like probably defers to Chris Paul. I think it's like an old but, like, dog, at the end, yeah, old dog young dog thing where yeah. it's like the old dog knows all the tricks, but sometimes you need the young dog to go run down that tennis ball. Right, mm-hmm. like it's just that's just the reality of it. So Devin Booker is needed very much so to be that guy who can carry the team well, and score a ton of points. The young dog also keeps the old dog alive for longer. With the exception of Champ and Major R.I.P. Yeah, but that's that's why a lot of people get a younger dog. Yeah, because it, it keeps the older one active, so it's yeah. good for both of them. Yeah, so forty point triple double for Devin Booker, um, insane game, insane game. But like I said, he had thir- he had eleven points going into halftime. 
and then he just went off. Um, and playoff playoff B's been playing really well, but not enough for Devin Booker. He's playoff okay. No. Yeah, I mean he he definitely deserves all the credit for that Utah Jazz series because <laughs> Kawhi got hurt and that was it. I when is Chris Paul coming back? Uh, we don't know. Okay. So does he actually have the cocoa? I don't know. Or is he like in advanced protocol stages because he was exposed? to Well, no, he's got the vaccine. So he wouldn't have to be in. I think he's got Coco. I think he does too. I hope he's okay. If LeBron had it, he's he would quarantining, definitely quarantining, but is symptom free. Symptom free. Okay. Devin Booker's got this. Have you seen the cars that Devin Booker drives into the arena every day? It's fucking awesome. Is it one of those spiders? One of those three wheelers? Well, he has a different one every time. That's cool. And they're all like old, souped up Cadillacs. It's got to be tough for Ben Simmons too. Like that's his his ex girlfriend's now dating Booker. And, he, and Booker actually like knows how to shoot a basketball into right. a hoop. Mm-hmm. Right. He can yeah, find a hole. Part, yeah, that one's that's Good that's the part that really kills. That's an upgrade. What is Ben like Ben Simmons, what do you do? What do you do? Someone I saw this on Twitter, Markel Fultz also couldn't shoot in Philadelphia. Either. True. Yeah. True. Maybe you just gotta change the scenery. I but think can he shoot in Orlando? He learned he, how he's to better. shoot. Sort he's of better. But I, I remember Markel yeah, no, Fultz he, like he, literally like he was, was broken. Was on it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was totally he, broken. He is a little more fixed. Yeah. So What about what about a hypnotist? That's what I would go for if I was the Sixers. Just, like, get the men in black thing and erase their entire memory of this entire playoff series. Do you know what the problem is? I actually am now talking myself into, like, I kind of want Ben Simmons on the Bulls. Just because he's 6'10 and plays great defense and, like, oh, my God, the skills that he has. If he could ever learn. I think he's going to be getting paid a lot of money and be on, like, four or five teams, and every team's going to be like, if we can teach him how to shoot – he could be one of the best players in the NBA. Yeah, how old is he right now? He's twenty five. So that I, he could be. Yeah, you can 24. learn how to, You can learn how to shoot. Chris he, Paul it, learned how to shoot. Ray John Rondo learned how to shoot. He knows everything else. Yeah, he has everything else. It's just the shooting part, which is important. We should keep stressing. Yes, it's very important. And very but, important. I think more important than the shooting is is the mental aspect of I don't want to shoot. I think he just, right. he just doesn't like shooting. Right. Oh man. All right. Hockey talk real quick. Golden Knights. Tied up the series with the Canadians, which actually kind of sucks. I thought I, the Canadians were up until late, I think, in the third period. They blew that one. They got the own goal, the flurry. Oh, they did. He was trying to clear the puck behind the net, and it like kicked out, and they just scored it. Well, that, that it, was with like thirty seconds. That left. was the last game tonight. They won in overtime. Yeah, they the so Knights they, won in overtime. They benched yeah. Flurry today, yeah. which is something that no one really saw coming until what happened. What's been happening in the playoffs with him? He's doing whatever the opposite of standing on your head is. He's had. Like a real sting. It might be a thing where they they could come back, beat the Canadians, and then Flurry's back in net next series. And then the Islanders game was incredible. That ending. I made a point of going home and watching it after I left the Nets game, and it was like I I saw everyone tweeting about it, and like, nah, it can't be this good. And then I watched. It, I was like, how the fuck did this happen? So that was incredible. And shout out all the people who, when I was like. When when game seven is going on and it was incredible and everyone was talking about it and I was like this game is awesome, uh, shout out the the guys who replied and were like you're talking about hockey right because mm-hmm. hockey game's better mm-hmm. just always a competition I love that I appreciate that it's uh, it's good to keep that rivalry fresh for everyone but that Islanders game was awesome and we might go to the Collie on game six maybe last game ever right yeah yeah should we the go? old barn close the, the old barn, barn down get loud in that place. Butter knife? There's it could there, be the move. There's just really oh. gotta, there could be a butter knife situation. There. <laughs> you we you cannot be able to butter knife our way in there. Just pee before you go, because there it, there's like two bathrooms in the entire arena, and you have to walk all the way around in the contest. They have to get sinks. To them. Uh, they I assume Trash they cans? have sinks. We might just have to dipe up for it, boys. Trash cans work. I didn't break the seal on Saturday night until like the end of the third quarter. I've never been more proud of myself. That, that still is got it. Like, yeah. it. Still got it situation. So they, I don't know if they still make it. There was this invention uh, like 10, 15 years ago called the Stadium Pal. And what it yeah. was, it was essentially just like a condom that you put on the tip of your pee-pee. It and was then a catheter. It, and then it had like a tube that ran to a bag on your side. So you could go to a game and just piss on yourself all day. Yeah. I, we should do that. We should, we should do we that. We should dipe up with the Stadium Pal. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. Should we talk some U.S. Open? I'm happy that we can talk U.S. Open because there was a moment on Sunday afternoon where if I were allowed to tweet such things, I would tweet. I would have tweeted, if Bryson DeChambeau wins this U.S. Open, I'm going to kill myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't tweet it because you're not allowed to tweet it. They would have banned my account. But I was thinking it at that moment. Thank God uh, he sucks. Because so it was, he was minus five through eight with the solo lead, 
and then he finished ended up finishing tied for 26th. Yeah, I mean, we call him a lot of stuff on this show. We've called him what, a steroid user, a cheater, a dork, a loser, um, a nerd. What else have we called him? Snowman. Snowman. We call him a lot of stuff, but we've never called him a quitter until today. Mm-hmm. And he quit when his uh, when his uh, giant cleats didn't save him. What was the 13th hole on that drive that he hit? His foot slipped out from under him mm-hmm. on his left foot. At that point, Bryson was like, I don't want to be out here anymore. And he quit. He mentally, he is a mentally weak golfer. Yeah. Which and, uh, we already knew because he's like having heart attacks because somebody's calling him by the wrong name. Right. But this was this was even noteworthy for Bryson to show his lack of mental toughness. Shout out the guy who, after Bryson sculled one over the green, was like, should have used a calculator on that one. Um, that, that's a funny chirp. Mm-hmm. John Rahm, though, was – there was a moment, like, I don't know, maybe like 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock at night – on Sunday, where it felt like everyone wanted to lose the U.S. Open, no one wanted to win it. People were just imploding left and right. But John Rahm finishes with two insane putts. He also he was the guy who I think if you talk to anyone in golf, he's like, oh yeah, who's the best golfer who hasn't broken through? It's John Rahm. Yeah, and he had the COVID thing two two weeks ago where he he ended up not you know had to pull out when he's got a four stroke lead going into Sunday. Uh huh. And I I love his look. He's got you know, every golfer either looks like an emaciated bat boy or like they just got stung by bees. He looks like he's having the allergic reaction to the bee. Like he's just a swollen person. He just he's, has a nice pouch. Yeah, he has a nice like strength that comes from his belly yep. that you just know he's he's gonna be able to last he's got a huge four days of golf. Big face to him, mm-hmm. big head He's a um, big John Rom. He's big he's John. Big Rom. John. Was Rom. he like six two? Yeah, the six six. Big John Rom. I actually and, we saw him at Shinnecock driving in a little mini sports car, and I was like, "Damn, that guy's too big for this." And his wife has an absolute cannon. I don't know if you've seen the clips of like he went to some training camp, some NFL team like invited him out. I don't know what team was like, "Hey, we should get John Rom out here to catch a couple balls." His wife throws like a thirty five yard spiral on a dime. Yeah. I didn't see that. Stuff. They also got engaged at Tory Pines, or maybe married at Tory Pines. Oh, really? So very is that I, his home track? So I had the the. Um, if you've never listened to golf on the radio, it's very fun. So I listened because I was I I was driving into work. I don't know. He was like around like hole thirteen or fourteen. So I put it on on the radio. Interesting experience. The only thing I really picked up from it. Do you know L- Louis Oosthuizen's name? Louis Oosthuizen. Yeah. Do you know his name? It's not Louis Oosthuizen. No, his name is. Lod- Lodowickus Theodorus Oosthuizen. That's so sick. That's that's a classic South African theme. They like, said it. Yeah. I was like, what are they saying right now? Lodowickus, L-O-D-E-W-I-C-U-S, Theodorus Oosthuizen. Yeah, so- Latin. South- yeah. yeah South, Amer- they, South African people, they like name their kids like you would name a, like a Greek, one of the lesser known Greek gods. Awesome. It gives a little bit of class to it. And Brooks was awesome. He's, you know, he's got a knee injury. He cut, came back from a... Serious, serious knee injury six months ago, and he still finished fourth, so now he's second and fourth. In and, the he, two and he's never finished behind Bryson at a major in which they have fans. Fans. I had a moment on Friday that uh, I had to like kind of check myself. Uh, my son's birthday turned two on Saturday, and so his birthday party with all his friends was on Friday. So we had like kids over and like the parents, and we had the U.S. Open on, and one of the parents came over and was like, Oh, how's Bryson doing? And I looked him dead in the eye. I was like, we're a fuck Bryson DeChambeau household, just so you know. <laughs> and then I had to be like, wait, dude, you're at a two-year-old's birthday party. Like, this is going to be tough to explain. It's a little aggressive. So I, I had a moment where I was like, you know what? Maybe the ri- maybe I need to cool off on the rivalry. No, you got to keep... You- <laughs> You don't turn down from 10, big guy. He was so confused. Like, why did that guy just say that to me? No, also, so. shout out to the golf streaker. We had a, that, I feel like we yes. don't get that yes. as often. So the golf streaker ran out there. He had two balls with him. He had a, uh, he brought his own golf club. Yep. Are you allowed to do that? You can just go to a, a golf tournament with a club? Like, like it's a mitt that you take to a baseball game? Dude, I saw a guy at the Nets game with a basketball. That's awesome. It's so cool. Yeah. I almost hit it out of his hands, but who does that? It's just, he's probably like just <laughs> dribbling through the concourse crossing people up not a kid yeah not a kid like ball is life 20s dude. i'm pretty sure they sell he was it was not a sold one it wasn't like it, a team logo nope. it was a, standard, it was like, a wilson or just ball, ball is truly life i'm going to this basketball game i'm bringing a basket oh also jake put a reminder in the file for us to bet the unders on all the first week of nba games next year because they're switching balls hmm there we go. Week. The um, yeah, but I I guess you can bring a club. Like, yeah. why are people bringing full bags? I I went to one U.S. Open. I wore a golf uh, glove. 
Yeah, I like that. I, I also like the dudes that show up in spikes. Yep. Like to get better traction as they're walking yeah. around, as they're, as they're chasing down their favorite golfer. Also, Bry Bryson could have used them. He could have. Shout out to the guy that left his full case of Stella when Bryson's ball just like hit it and nestled up uh, right to the side of it. There was a lot of weird shots. A lot of weird stuff was happening in the afternoon on the back nine. That uh, Was it Shoffley's? Ball got stuck in a tree, tree in the tree after it hit off the golf cart or it was the, the golf path. Bizarre. And Tory Pines is just weird because you just have people parasailing and what what is that called? Parasailing. They were the Kite cameramen. Sailing? They were like they were taking the the spot of where you would traditionally have the Goodyear blimp. But no, it but there was drifts above. There's and, other guy. Regular guys are doing. Oh, it too. I thought they all, all the people up there just had cameras. No, I don't think so. I think no, those weren't just no. It seemed to me like They're something just you would only see in like a golf video game. Yes, and it just yeah, like an N sixty four game. Yeah, and it was just it's it just was very windy weird. though, so it was probably like good parasailing. Yeah, good Is it para parasailing? I, parasailing or kiteboarding? Kiteboarding? I, I, I don't think it's kite windsurfing. Is it windsurfing? Are they I windsurfing? I couldn't see close enough. I guess they, the, they technically are windsurfing. They are windsurfing, but, but that's not windsurfing. windsurfing. I think they're paragliding. Did. Paragliding. I just kept on thinking, like, what if one of them crashes? Or crash into each other, because yeah. you don't have, like, air traffic control telling you where to turn. It's just you're in the sky. The sky belongs to God. Wasn't there one of those at the soccer game that crashed? <laughs> oh, that yeah, was a guy parachuted, parachuted yeah. into the parachuted. soccer game. Almost took out a full row of people. Yes, yes. I think he got caught on the spider cam, actually, when he was yes. trying to land. Anything from the Euros that we should talk about? Um, People got really mad because I posted that screenshot of Ronaldo. Germany. And apparently he ran box to box. Germany and Who Netherlands cares? look good. France looks okay. Mbappe is 19. Well, France looks bad. Oh, uh, no, they look okay. They no, had, that was a loss. Had, that was a tie I, I loss. Know, it's a 1-1. One, one, a tie one, loss. One loss. That's a tie which loss. Which happens. England had a 1-1 one, one loss Big to Scotland. No, zero, zero. Zero, nil, nil. Even worse. Uh, nil, nil. Yeah. Big cat. Even worse loss. But yeah, so those are those some bad losses <laughs> from some of the favorites. It's just it's going to be the same thing that happens all the time in soccer, where it's just the same four teams from Europe are going to get to the semifinals. This is going to be Germany, France. England. Is going to lose in the semifinals, although I, I am addicted to saying it's coming home. Italy and Spain. Yep. Who okay, cares? Count. Oh, nice. I like that. I like that, Hank. And we had no PLL this week, so let's get to our uh, Who's Back of the Week. Who's Back of the Week is brought to you by our friends at the Cash App. Cash App is back. The stock market is back. Investing through Cash App is back. You can buy and sell Bitcoin super easy on the Cash App. And, of course, when you download the Cash App and enter the referral code BARSTOOL, you get $10 for free, $10 to the ASPCA. The Cash App will now send $10 to the ASPCA, like we said. And if you download the Cash App, like I said, you can download it and buy and sell Bitcoin. Super, super easy to do. Download the Cash App from the App Store, Google Play Store today. Um, Hank, your Who's Back of the Week? Uh, my Who's Back of the Week is Red Bull Racing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. One, they won in France this week. Uh, and that's now two races since we've had him on and two two wins. So Horner is locked in on the toilet that he likes to piss in. And they're I think they're in first in the in the overall standings now, right? Red Bull is? Yes, so. they are. Yeah. In the Constructors, Constructors Cup. Constructors Cup. And Danny Ricardo had a good race as well. He so did. the PMT F one bump is real. Uh this was the first time I woke up was a little hungover and I was like, Oh, I can actually watch this. It's kind of delightful, weird. right? Yeah, it's weird. I'm still I gotta use I love the show. I really do like the show. I, I binged it in like two weeks. It's still I'm getting used to watching it live because I don't really know what's going on. So well, it's hard yeah. to follow like who's doing well and, and who's not. It is a little hard to follow, um, and there are a lot of people online who are pretending that they know a lot more. Where it's like just not let's us. all just let's all just admit here that we don't know what we're talking about. We're gonna overtake is about the only thing I yeah. know. Mm -hmm. We're gonna figure it out. Just push, 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 yeah. push, push. That was mega. Um, <laughs> I, something about just waking up and having uh, a, an announcer with an English accent is soothing. Yeah. It just I, works. I've got a, a really bad take, um, but it's something that I truly believe, so I'll share it with you guys in this room here. I think the cars are too loud. No, If they could, I, make, if they could make the cars what? just like 20% less noisy, do you know what? I'd be all in. I was actually listening to an F1 podcast. No big deal. Uh, Sounds exhilarating. It, it is. Uh, they were actually saying they were they were lamenting that the cars are too soft. Oh, really? They have gotten a lot softer with like you know the electric nature yeah. and everything. Uh -huh. They used to be true American, 
not like, actually American. Muscle car, like no, but, Ferrari, no, you're but right. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, American some kick engines, you in the yeah. dick and fucking okay. have a car that blows your ears out kind of engine. How about this? I'll go either one of two ways with it. Make them a little bit softer or make them just really fucking loud. Yeah. Right no, but now, people are saying it doesn't sound like Because right F1 now, racing. it just reminds me of the Vuvuzelas in car form, <laughs> where they're just kind of, they're there in the background and it's a high-pitched hum and it's kind of annoying. So if it was a little bit quieter, I'd be happy. Or if it was just like, make your balls shake. Go loud, with, I would like that. Go with that one if you want to be a real F1. Okay, guy. yeah, the cars are too soft. They're too soft. There's, it's become, they're basically racing toy cars. Yeah, it's the pussification of America uh -huh. of Europe. Yeah. I, yep. No, seriously, they, they that is like a big, that's actually a real complaint. Okay. The cars I'm on, are yeah. too soft. You talked me into it. I'm, <laughs> I'm on board with it. Yeah. Is that it, Hank? Uh, also, track and field and swimming. It's tis the season. Yep. Oh, I saw someone. I can't, fuck, I can't remember. I should have screenshot it. Someone tweeted out, and I thought it was the greatest <laughs> idea ever. I'm sorry that I'm not giving you credit. Please let me know. I'll give you credit. The Olympics, if they had a lane for just regular average people for comparison would be so incredible. Mm -hmm. If they had the 10th lane in a swimming pool be like, all right, let's find a, like a 15-pound overweight guy and just let him swim just to show how slow an average person was, it would be so fascinating to watch. I'd be cool with that. Another two ideas that I would have for so we'll also like dye the pool different colors. I think that'd be sick. If it was like the uh, like Eastern Washington field or the Central Michigan, like give me some different looks to the playing field. And then if you took, what if one of those lanes just was basically an aquarium? So you had all sorts of natural sea life in the pool, but there was like glass that divided it, so they weren't going to swim into the other guy's lanes. But just like in the middle of the pool, you get some octopuses, you get some some flounder, or maybe a couple of sharks. I think that'd be sick. That was I I pitched that idea to Mark Cuban, the the real Shark Tank, where it's uh, a t a pool full of sharks, and if you get to the other side, then you get investment in your deal. Yeah. I mean, that sounds it good. It would be fun to watch. That sounds good, too, but it would be nice to see some marine life in the water. Yeah. I. I how about just we'll settle for the dye, the myth dye that, uh, m you know, makes a color when you piss in the pool. Mm -hmm. Just so we can watch and be like, hey, that person pissed. Yeah, they all do. Yeah. No, I know, but it would be funny yeah. to watch in real time, like, oh, they pissed, oh, they pissed. And, and if the dye was actually brown, so it looked like they shat in the pool. Uh-huh. Yeah. That'd be funny. Either way, just get normal people, like a normal guy just throwing the shot put. 18 feet. Yep. <laughs> Would just be a very funny thing to watch. Yep. <laughs> All right. What's your... Oh, your who's back? My who's back of the week is Kyle Schwarber. Kyle Schwarber's back in a big yep. way. My favorite baseball player, Kyle Schwarber. He's a gnat for life. We love him in this city. We're going to keep him around. We're going to do whatever it takes to keep Kyle Schwarber home in D.C. for as long as we can. He embodies D.C. He embodies D.C. I know culture. you're like trying to troll me, but you can't troll no, me with I'm him not. I love I'm him. saying I love him too. He's right, but amazing. I, I like, know you're trying you to troll me. You look at that guy's me, but... face and you're like, that guy okay. is an East Coaster for life. <laughs> what I'm saying is I I love him. I'm happy that he's doing well. Like He's the type of guy Three taters that today. I don't – like. he could go to any – he could maybe even – I would even say – I would probably not say it out loud, but if he was on the Cardinals and he was hitting home runs, I'd still, like, there'd be a small part of me be like, fuck yeah, Schwarber, you're the best. Three home runs today, two home runs yesterday. Just lighting been, the world on he fire. He hit, I think he hit four last weekend. Yeah, so I think he's had, what, eight home runs in the last week? Yes. Pretty good week for Kyle Schwarber. Yeah. So we're doing what it takes. He's going to stay in D.C. Hopefully win several World Series with us going to the Hall of Fame as National. Mr. Nat is what we're calling Got him. Got it. Kyle Schwarber. Either who's Again, back. Again, you can't troll I'm me. I'm not. I'm saying I, I love Kyle Schwarber. You're not. Kyle Schwarber is that was a great... Totally, you totally watched every uh, Schwarber at bat. I watched him today. <laughs> I have I have a, an alert that's set up. Like Remember when they used to cut in to Mark McGuire when yeah. he was in the home run chase? When Schwarber's up, it's like I call him Schwarbombs. And so he's hit a few of those. I'm yep. really enjoying it. And then uh, my other who's back of the week is burner accounts because Josh Allen allegedly has a burner account. He was um, joking. Was he joking about it? Definitely. Are you serious? Was he kidding about it? For sure. Wait. I read Billy's blog about oh it. Oh, my God. All right. Oh, let's keep uh, going because this is – that was like the biggest joke I, I of know all that time. My blog said it was a joke. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I didn't read all of Billy's blog. But I, I, I was hoping that Josh Allen would have Yikes. had a burner account. No, it was it was very clear joke. Okay. Clickbait move. Clickbait move on Billy's part. And you got clickbaited by Billy? I got Billy? clickbaited by Billy. Yeah. Wow. I, uh – Okay, um, <laughs> my who's back is actually Billy because I was walking by the kitchen and he was uh, completely seriously telling Hank that he should do a little cycle of HGH. And I just, it just felt good 
going from last week we were eating 26 papadillas to this week we're back to like having someone just constantly push steroids on us. Well, and yeah, I, I mean, like that. He's my six backs coach, and that was one of his suggestions. I'll, I'll, I'm open to anything. People are saying you got to do it natural. Yeah, I mean, I, I obviously said no to the steroids. Yeah, right. Okay. I am open. Good. My ears Good. are open. My ears what about the HGH, though? That's steroids. I'm just trying to talk Hank down from doing SARMs because he was raising it, like, actually. Mm -hmm. SARMs? Yeah. I said, should I do SARMs? It's what is jump. SARMs? Someone tweeted at me when we had the conversation. We're like, yo, dude, you should definitely do SARMs. So then I sent to Billy. It was like, should I do SARMs? And to Billy's credit, once again, he had actually written a blog about the dangers of SARMs. So I oh. got all my information from that. Okay. There we go. He's back. Right. He's back. Um, um, all right, Jake, you're who's back, and then we're going to get to uh, George Kittle and Greg Olson. Yes. Triple plays are back. Oh, mm. saw this. Yeah. The Yankees had a walk-off triple play today. Has to be the first time that's ever happened. Uh, you tell us. No. I, I don't no, know. No. You can have a walk off defensive play. You tell yeah. us. I know. Yes. No, game winning I, no, triple I, play. I, I think yes. it counts. I think it's a walk off. It's a game winning triple play. Yeah. Boy, I you tell okay, us. Okay, I'll do the research. It's happened before. Tim Kirkchen would, he, he was talking about earlier today. I think he said it was 2009, maybe. What are you doing with the mic here? I'm trying. It's, we got some technical difficulties. Thank it you. It was really. sick, though. Triple plays are, triple plays should replace no hitters. Because they're cooler than no hitters. I actually, point. I think you should be able to get a run for a triple play. What do you mean? You, on defense, you should be able to score a run yeah. if you get a triple play. Yeah. You should also be able to try to get a quadruple play. That's where a run should happen. Mm -hmm. So just keep, like if it's bases loaded. Try to get everybody out. Try to get yeah. everyone out even though you don't need to. Oh, like a pass, or, pass or, ball strikeout No, that's what, that's what it should be, though. It should be if you can get to four outs. Then you get a run. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can do one a double, out, you can do a double play. Yeah, if on there's the last, a one yeah. out, you get a triple play, that should count as a run. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So you're always just trying to get the extra out. You should absolutely figure out a way to score on defense. Instead of giving us like six more designated hitters, like I'm sure Manfrotto is going to try to do at some point this year, just give us what the fans want, and that's defensive runs. Four out. Yeah, so if you get if there's two outs and you get a triple play, that should be two extra runs. Yep. That's all. I'm still ball. looking if it's first. It's right ever. up there with the free throw. Idea. Write that down. <laughs> well, no, we know that this one's not legal. The the free throw thing. I knew that wasn't PFT legal. Wouldn't listen to us. Uh, well, Jake, you got it. It's the first time in Yankees history they turn a triple play and one via walk off. The We're the only John. team. Yeah, the only team to the Yankees. Twenty seven rings. Yankees? This is a complex stat. Wow. Uh, what? 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 It's a what stat? Complex. Bonk. Mm. Complex. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Don't teach you that, Syracuse. No. All right, I've been bad <laughs> with pronunciations today. Um, yeah, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All set. All right. I'll get the answer for you soon. All right. Perfect. All right. Let's get to our interview. We got uh, Greg Olson, George Kittle, uh, coming up right now. They got Tight End University coming this week. And we're brought to you by our friends at Simply Safe. Simply Safe Home Security founders Chad and Eleanor Lawrence designed their first security system in their kitchen. They did it for a very personal reason. Their friends had just had their home broken into. They were struggling to find a security system that was simple to set up and would make them feel safe again. So making people safe is what Simply Safe has been doing ever since that moment 15 years ago. A passion to protect people not only drives every engineering detail in its products, but it motivates every interaction with its customers. And the thing is, Simply Safe just makes it so easy. It talks or it takes about two minutes to customize a system on their website. SimplySafe.com slash PMT. Simply Safe has highly trained security experts ready whenever you need them, whether that's during a fire, a burglary, a medical emergency, or even just when you're setting up the system. There's always someone there who has your back to keep you safe and make sure you feel safe. To learn more about how Simply Safe can help protect you and your family, visit simplysafe.com slash PMT today to customize your system and get a free security camera. You also get a 60-day risk-free trial, so there's nothing to lose. That's simplysafe.com slash PMT. Make sure your family is protected. Make sure your home is protected and you have the peace of mind, especially in the summer when you're traveling. Uh, so go check it out, simplysafe.com slash PMT. Okay, here they are. Greg Olson and George Kittle. Okay, we now welcome on very special guests. Thanks for that clap there. Uh, I, I this this sucks because it's we have Greg Olson and we have George Kittle, but we call George Greg. So like now my brain's already confused. But we have Greg Olson and George yeah. Kittle. They have Tight End University coming up this week. 
So we wanted to get them on because they're both friends, longtime friends of the program. Um, Greg, I wanted to t- start with you. Can we do the um, like sentimental stuff at the end? Because I don't want to cry at the beginning done. of the interview. Son, done. Okay. All right. But we will do that at the end. Whenever you want. It's your show, bud. How was your Father's Day? It was awesome. I spent it watching my other son, my oldest son, play baseball in Charleston. Okay. So it was act- it was actually pretty awesome. And a pretty special Father's Day because – Yep. But we'll do that at the we, end. Do we, we want to do that? No, at the no, end, no. We'll right? do it at the end. I think, I think we'll we're it. getting into no, it. No, right no, no. We're going to do it at the end. I want to give the people a tease. All right. So, Tight yep. End University, who who decided that this is what you guys are going to do? And was it like some kind of, hey, tight ends aren't respected enough? I'll sh- I'll start with you, Greg. That was confusing. So, so George, so. Oh yeah. So wait, why do you te- why do you call George? Greg? We just started calling him Greg for it. It felt like it fit to be honest. And then right after we started doing it's a great it, great name. Everybody else started calling him Greg by accident. It was like a I think ESPN wrote an article and then the headline. Yeah, it, it called you Greg Kittle. I think what it was, and this is going to be no offense to George, but I think we also were like George is just not. That's not the name of a dude who's just like throwing people off of him and truck sticking people. That's like. Uh, you know, a uh, king in England or a bulldog. Like, those are Georges. Greg, yeah, like, George just doesn't fit the style that that Greg <laughs> plays. Well, hey, I will say, I do use Greg on my uh, my Uber and my Lyfts and, like, DoorDash. It's Greg Kittle, just so people don't know it's actually me. Oh, wow. Wow, they'll never really figure that in out. really disguise, yeah. <laughs> Love that. Love that. All right, so back to the question. Tight End University, yeah. tell us how it started and why is Gronk not invited? Whoa. All he right, is so a- he was invited. He was invited. So we'll clear the air on that. We'll get to that in a second. But I mean, really what happened was back in March when I announced my retirement, George Kittle, he I- he just sent me like a, you know, congrats, man, you know, good, good, good career kind of thing. And uh, we just started texting back and forth. We had gotten to know each other over the last couple of years. We have the same marketing agent and, you know, just got to know each other from playing and whatnot. And, um, He's like, hey, if you ever want to come down to Nashville, I got like five or six different tight ends in the league who stay with me and train down here. And I was like, you know, that sounds awesome. You know, I'll try to get down there. And just from kind of texting back and forth, we kind of thought maybe there'd be something bigger involved. And we said, let's get Kelsey involved. And he immediately said yes. So the three of us kind of jumped on a call and a handful of conversations later, we got over 50 NFL tight ends coming down to Nashville, the Georgia's kind of hosting us down there at some facilities he has access to. And uh, it really just started organically from just a random text conversation after I retired. So you invited uh, Gronk and you also invited Tebow. Is it has, oh. is Tebow there with you right now? So I'm going to let actually, George take this one. <laughs> so nothing against Tim Tebow, but I found it hard to invite. Uh, I, I, I wish nothing but the best for Tim Tebow. And I hope he has a fantastic season playing tight end. But it's hard for me to not invite like a backup tight end on, let's say, the New York Giants, as opposed to inviting a guy that just started playing tight end in the position. Because the thing is, we do have limited spots. It, I wish I could make it a brand. A, every every NFL tight end could come. Every it's accessible to everybody. But like what we tried to do this year is we uh, we wanted like to pay for everything for all the tight ends to come to kind of make it a special like uh, event for all tight ends. And so like we we booked up an entire hotel like they're completely out of rooms. We have every room taken or all the block like we blocked off a certain amount of rooms and we're completely out of rooms and so like we didn't we thought we we're going to get like 20 guys. And next thing I know we have 47 confirmed like as of last week and I think we just got past 50 but it's just like wow like that's a lot of guys that we weren't you know like we kind of expect the guys to want to jump in but it just kind of happened like uh-huh. that and so uh hopefully in the next years to come we can make it like open and available to everybody cuz okay, you know so- I want just just like a, a quick headline grab, would you like to extend an invitation to Tim Tebow for next year's camp? Yes. If he's on a roster this year and he plays tight end, we would love to have him. We would love, love. to work with him. Once he's officially a tight end, uh-huh. we would love to work with him. Okay, so here's a follow-up headline. question. Headline. Done. Here's a follow-up headline. question. And, and Greg, I, I like no offense to Tim Tebow. He does get people talking, but – from from your perspective, you played in the NFL for over a decade, tight end, Pro Bowls, everything. What's the thing that like Tebow or the casual fan doesn't realize about playing the tight end position that like he's not going to be able to pick up overnight? What's the because he's a, cra- a crazy athlete, right? Great athlete, 
played, you know, minor league baseball, Heisman Trophy, all these things. But what's the thing that it doesn't matter if he is great at everything else, but the one thing, it's like you're not going to be able to learn this in one mini camp. This takes years and years of practice. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to be unique to necessarily Tebow, right? I think here's what used to piss me off as a tight end in the NFL, and maybe George feels the same way, but like there's one position in the NFL that gets all the I never played the position or even played the sport of football before, right? I played rugby, I played basketball, I played Australian rules football, I played, right? Like there's all these guys that never played tight end, let alone football, and then when they want to make the transition to trying in the NFL, they're like, yeah, let's just make that guy a tight end. And I always used to take offense to that, you know, like every mini camp, every training camp, we'd have like random guys on our team who never played football. And I was like, why did the point guard who never made it from Auburn, like why did he never be made a safety? Why was it just like the power of fo- Like that used to piss me off. And I'd be like, you guys have no idea how hard this shit is. Like you, you guys have not a clue. So like this isn't unique to Tebow. I just think everybody – thinks when their original position or sport comes to an end like oh fuck it i'll just go play tight end and i'm like fuck what <laughs> like it actually seems like maybe the hardest position to pick up because you're gonna do so much got, so yeah. what Besides is the quarterback part? yeah what's the skill set that you, like would you say is the hardest for a tight end what's the what's the part of the game that that is most difficult to perfect for a tight end i mean the, i think it's the fact that you ha- you have to be good at everything like you can't just like you can't you yeah you can be an elite route runner you can catch the ball really well you can run really well but then if you can't like hold your own in the run game and you can't like take in hit in the face by a 300 pound defensive end then like you kind of have they kind of like uh, call plays around you instead of like you being able to be the focal point but like you have to be very good at pass pro running routes uh, setting the edge being able to crack on the safety being able to sift block a defensive end like pa- like yeah you have to be in the backfield for protection like a running back where like you just kind of do everything. And then it's just if you can do all of those things at a high level. So you guys have have tight end you, and we always love the debate. Whenever it comes up in like college football, there was a debate last year of what DBU is. Is it LSU or is it Texas? What would you say is the actual tight end you? Is it Iowa? Yeah, it's Iowa. Dude. Like I got Dallas Clark on my shirt right now for a reason, baby. That's tight. I, I ran into Dallas Clark at a, at a concert a couple of years ago. Um, Did you? It's Iowa, though. I mean, come on. I mean, you're, hey, who, you're awesome. Dallas was awesome. I got I got Hawkinson. I got Fant in the first round. Never before done. Mm-hmm. Facts. So I'm mean, within like last and ten like, years. Are we saying like NFL career, like accomplishments, like what are we basing? Because I mean, if you want to talk, I mean Miami went five years in a five tight ends in a row who were drafted in the first round, and like the only guy who wasn't was drafted in the second round. Mm-hmm. Hmm. When was that? That was pretty recent, right? Well, so you going so going back to Miami lineage, right? You have you have Bubba Franks first round, Shockey first round, Kellen Winslow first round, Kevin Everett second round, me first round. Then we oh, oh then we had we, since then we've had Jimmy Graham, one of the most prolific guys of all time. David Njoku was a first round pick, career still kind of developing, but he's coming to the camp like super uber talented kind of building his career up in up in cleveland i mean we we've had dudes now i mean okay i i i I like your counterpoint uh here's a counter to your counterpoint maybe don't say kellen winslow when you do the list yeah it's always it's always (laughs) uncomfortable that's always that's always a tough one you had me with bubba franks all-time football guy name no we're like we're like peter king yeah strictly on the field field is is the only thing that we'll discuss here (laughs) yeah that's yeah the 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 kellen one is uh yeah that's that's tough well no you were talking about his dad yeah yeah kellen winslow senior yeah that's who we that's who we meant Yes, exactly. Is uh, Greg is is Mike Martz going to get invited to this tight end university? No, I I tried texting him. He didn't get back to me. He said <laughs> he uh, he said he only has time for wideouts. Yeah, he would just show up and be like, I can't use any of these guys. <laughs> what the hey, fuck? So one thing I will say, yeah, fuck, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Um, but no. So one thing I used to say until Kittle and Kelsey got their new contracts, humble, you know, you're a humble brag for you. Right. Um. Thanks. The joke used to be like back to what made tight end hard. Like the joke used to be like you have to block the same guy as the tackle, run routes and win versus the same guy as the wide receiver, and they pay you half. Like other than Kelsey and Kittle, that applied to everybody else. Mm-hmm. 
but that was always like the running joke. Like we have to all, we have to do the same shit that $15 million left tackle has to do and run routes against the same guy, the $15 million wide receiver has to run routes against, and they're going to pay us seven. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, that's a good way to put it. And George, leading up to the draft, we were talking some about of us. Some, some of us. Some of us. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about how sick it would have been if you guys had gotten Kyle Pitts, not to replace you, but just to see the kind of weird shit that that Kyle Shanahan would come up with, <laughs> having two awesome tight ends. Did that thought occur to you? Were you, Were you like, you know what, we would be pretty fun to watch? I mean, I'm excited. Like, I'm a Kyle Pitts fan. Just watched them last year. Like, the dude just scores touchdowns. Like, it's nothing. It's crazy. Like, he just always scores two touchdowns a game and. I think um, just his athletic ability and then his ability just on a football field. I, he's going to be very talented in Atlanta. I'm, I'm, I wanted him to go like first overall, like to be like the first tight end, tight end to ever go first. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I get it, but I would have drafted him first. Yeah, and, and then right after that, I think was when Kyle said, "Like, I don't know if Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be alive uh, at the draft, so we can't make any guarantees." Has Kyle? That was an all-time coaching line. It was. Yeah, it was, was awesome. Has he? Has he ever threatened to kill you, Kyle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he, he's like he doesn't. He, if you, he's very in the moments. Like you ask him, like, who? Hey, are you like, are you good to go Sunday? Like now, I can say back to him, like, I don't know if I'm gonna be alive Sunday, coach. Yeah. Like, you know, game day, man. We're all questionable. <laughs> yeah, that we're was all. Amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. How weird was it though that like the off season with you know the 49ers doing all the trading up and down the draft, and then everyone's decided who they're gonna take, then they don't take the guy they're gonna take. I would imagine. It's been a little awkward talking with Jimmy because I know you're friends with him. Or does he have a good attitude like, hey, I'm going to just keep playing and hope, you know, things work out? I think it's more of a – I mean, the great thing about football is is like when like when you're given the opportunity, like it's, it's your job to lose it. So, like, I mean, like we, we brought in tight ends like the last three years for me and like the guys that I play with in my room are awesome. Like they're all good football players. But, like, I'm the starter and, like, it's my opportunity to make plays so I continue to be the starter. And that's one thing about Jimmy. Like that dude had a fantastic OTAs, and he was slinging the ball. Offense was clicking, and like he's just taking advantage of the opportunity. Like Jimmy had a great OTAs. He, like I said, he looked great, and um, and Trey Lance has an opportunity to be a really good quarterback. So I think it's just going to be a really good competitive battle. And uh, you know, Jimmy's you know he's he's ready to roll, and it, it, it's it's exciting to see that fire in him. One uh, one thing I love look, about your uh, your tattoos and the uh, the evolution is we get to look back at like all the pictures of you when you're playing and we can pretty much pinpoint exactly what year it was based on yeah. the picture of your arm. Have you gotten? I know you got was it the Halo guy? You got Master Chief on there. Have you added yeah. to it? I I just got Godzilla yesterday. Hell yeah! Whoa! The, the best oh, part, awesome. Hey, hold on. So the other day we're texting about coming on this show, guys. And the response from George when I said, well, shoot, you know, what about this weekend? Like any other, he goes, well, Saturday I'm flying to Miami and I'm going to spend eight hours getting a tattoo. And I was like, I was like, all right, I guess Saturday's out. <laughs> Wait, ass. They don't have tattoo. Like, guess- yeah. They don't have tattoo places in Nashville. Uh, no, it's just, uh, I, I had a tattoo. Like I get a couple tattoo artists in my DMS every once in a while. They're just like, Hey, I'd love to like add to your artwork. And I was like, I looked at some of his stuff and I was like, this is really, really sick. And I just like, like, like I said, I like some of his stuff. And he had, he did like a guy with a tiger face right here. And I was like, that's cool. But can you do Godzilla? And he was like, yeah, I can do that. So I flew down and I got tatted in Miami. All right. So, I got a question for you then. Amazing. I'm 36 years old, father of two. Yeah. I always wish I had a tattoo. Is it too late for me? I think it is. My, my dad is, my dad's 62 and he's about to finish his full left forearm sleeve. Really? So he yeah, went he, how long of his life before he got his first set to? My dad he got a he had a butterfly on his thigh when he was in college okay. for the white, the white buffalo hunter. Um and then he didn't get another tattoo until I think like I was in I had graduated high school. So he or was like, he was a not ta- like you you would see him and you'd be like that's not a tattoo guy and then all of a sudden one day he just became well, yeah, a tattoo so, guy. Well my my dad was a pastor for a while too like pastors don't really get tatted up all the time. But uh, he was that he was a he was a lawyer for a while, and then when he became a football coach again at OU back in like 2010, whenever that was, he started opening it up and like he has a rise against tattoo, like the band, yeah. the whole logo on that he's got a whale shark on his arm. He, he's about to do like um, some type of tribal water tattoo on his rest of his forearm. So he's ready to roll. So I can do it. Yeah, maybe what, I got to become a football coach. What, what's a good starter yeah. tattoo for somebody <laughs> in their mid 30s? Maybe a single teardrop. Yeah. <laughs> um. I don't know. Maybe like. You know, get something like you know connected to you, like I don't know, like your your son's birthday. Yeah, that, look okay. at you. Nice. Like, there okay. you go. Yeah. Like 
That's good. Yeah, maybe start like with that. that. Something that like people can't make fun of. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We're, we're gonna. I have one of those too. A what tat? An ass tat. You do? Let me see it. Of what? No. It's my uh, it's my college address for my freshman year. I, I kind of want to see it. I'm <laughs> yeah, come on, let's I see. I kind of want to see it. I kind of want to see it. We'll blur it out. Be in Tennessee on Wednesday night, and I'll show you then. Wait, no, you got to hey, show geez, it. Seriously, I need you to show me your ass when we get there. First thing. <laughs> no, show I'm it right in- now. You know that this is like you can't. If you guys are doing promo on like Bleacher Reporter, or, you know Florio show, like you can't do this. So you can do it here. Show us your ass. No, the, the no, seriously, I, show, I, us I, show us your ass. Show us your ass. No. Show us your. I'll ass. show you my. Yeah, ass. we'll show our asses here. No, that's different. <laughs> what? <laughs> That was the corner of my ass. I don't. I don't. Boom! Have a TV. There's I, there's a lot of PFT's ass. He went full crack. Hey, I, I only went a little. Part, we're all showing asses hey, here. The best part of PFT's ass shot right there was his microphone. <laughs> it so was perfectly <laughs> in his ass crack. So you don't even need to blurry it. It's like it was like he did it on purpose. It smells <laughs> funny now. Hank would do it, but he doesn't have an ass. Yeah, come on. Oh, damn! That was that was me. <laughs> Wait, show us your ass. Go ahead. Go ahead, George. Seriously, show, show us your, your ass. ass. I'll come whenever you guys come down for great week. No, show you, you know that. what? I'm I'm going on strike in this episode. I'm not going to say another <laughs> word until I see until I see George Kittle's ass. Just show us a peek, a little peek. Hey, yeah. our sponsors need to see your ass. Yeah, the sponsors of TU need to see Dude, your ass. Greg, I, influence on my wife's looking at me through the window right now, and I'm going to pull up my she ass. Knows. There you go. Listen, <laughs> she's seen it. I like I listen. I like Greg <laughs> retired. Greg. Oh, there it, it is. is. Oh, okay, that's nothing. A, that's Where's upper ass. Eight thirty Miller. That's good. That's like lower back. Yeah, that's fine. Eight thirty Miller. We saw a lot more of uh, yeah, yeah of uh, both of our asses. <laughs> Four of us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, great. How I do have that... nothing to show on my ass. I have I have I have no tattoos. Not none. Tattoo. None. How, how do we feel about um about the new numbers in the NFL where you got wide receivers that are going to be rocking single digits now and tight ends are still stuck with forties and eighties. Numbers. Say it you again. Guys, we just went from ass tats to single digit numbers. Yeah. Yep. We got range, baby. In the biz. <laughs> It's called the transition. <laughs> it's a segue. Like segue. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, it is what it is. I think it'll be kind of cool. I know uh, Tom Brady was mad about it just be for, like, the defensive guys. And I, I will say, like, the numbers on some, like, defensive players is kind of odd. Like, when a safety is wearing a linebacker's number, like, just something weird like that. But, I mean, I think the, the game will evolve, get used to it. If you were to change your number, if there was, like, any number, uh, like, let's pretend, like, the rule book did not exist, what number would you want to wear? Eleven. That would look. You look really fast. I feel like Dude, it might be my would, d- my dumb brain, but I feel like you would lose some blocking ability yes. if you got number eleven. No, you wouldn't be able to shed as many guys. Remember Lavar Arrington? Wasn't he number eleven? Yeah, there's 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 a couple college. Was he guys. number eleven, or I messed that up? He was there's, fifty six in the NFL. I don't know. No, what he, no. At, at Penn State, at Penn State I mean, he was eleven. Yes, at yeah, Penn State thought, he was eleven. Yeah. He was unbelievable with that neck roll number. Dude, you would be un. You know how lean you would look. You know how they say like long skinny numbers make everyone look lean? Yep. Dude, you'd be you would look unbelievable in number. I would be number 4. That was my high school number. That's where it all started. Number big four. neck roll. Big neck roll, gigantic face That's... mask, number 4. Going to get back to the Greg's in a second before we do. Sport Clips is giving you guys all a shout out. Sport Clips offers a unique haircut experience that exceeds your typical haircut from start to finish. First of all, you've got the best stylists in men's and boys' haircuts with specialized training and techniques. Cutting guys' hair can be harder at times than cutting women's hair. When you go to Sport Clips versus a place that cuts women's hair, you're getting stylists who are specifically trained to cut guys' hair. Their experts are their experts understand the facial shape and hair texture and cutting to a guy's best advantage. And Sport Clips signature service is the MVP haircut experience. So much more than a haircut. You get that legendary hot steam towel on your face. You get massaging shampoo. It makes you melt into your seat. It's the ultimate in relaxation. They've got 1,800 locations nationwide. Sport Clips is closer than you think. I'm getting my haircut there when Ryan Fitzpatrick wins a playoff game this year. Sport Clips, I'm already in line. After week one of the playoffs, it's going to happen. And when you want to sign up for a haircut at Sport Clips, you get a 15-minute heads up when it's time to head in. So you can schedule it out with their on-deck text alerts you wait less time and you get more prime time text message opt-in required message and data fees may apply visit sport clips near you for a haircut that exceeds the typical experience from start to finish now more greg's hey speaking of where it all started um greg are you ready to do a documentary on uh the seventh floor crew it's funny you say that yeah you know well i know you know that i know 
<laughs> it's funny you say that. There, there may be a time that we can uh, dive into. The, so here's my take on that whole thing. Yes, I haven't really, I haven't really talked much about it, but that story obviously got a lot of publicity at the both at the time and then after I had gotten drafted, it kind of got kicked up again after the draft, and then it got kicked up again when they did the thirty for thirty with the U. And my whole thing is no one's ever told like what's really happened. Like, how did it come to be? Like we're made out to seem like a bunch of guys were sitting around just coming up with like the most asinine things ever, which is kind of true. But like there was some sort of like rhyme to the reason of how the whole thing like organically became. And it was never intended on being shared outside of the handful of guys that were involved. So it took on a completely unintended life of its own, but no one ever told the story of like who did it, how it was done, where it was filmed. Cause I think that's the part of the story that people would be really interested in and yes. know that like the guys who are involved are like normal guys for the most part. Um, but no one's ever like told that side. They've, they've told like the glamor, like party pregame playing it in bars, you know, that side. Yes. Have you considered doing a sequel to it? Ooh, no, no. <laughs> I have a daughter now, and I pray to God she never learns how to use Google. So when <laughs> yeah, you, when, I don't think that's going to happen. When you're on the road, like when you're at TEU coming up this week, are you do you make a request like, hey, just don't put me on the seventh floor in the hotel? <laughs> no, no, but I'll be honest with you. Like the handfuls, you know, the time just by sheer probabilities, you get that, and like you get your room key at a hotel, and like you hit the button, and like in your mind you kind of chuckle. Like, anytime you hear <laughs> Like anytime you hear somebody say like, "Hey, what floor are we on?" Oh, we're on the seventh floor. Like in my mind, I'm like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny. Do you yeah. feel like get it? You don't, funny. you don't get enough respect for your ability as a rapper. Like your flow was kind of, it was kind of overshadowed by the content of the rap. It was, and that's my one regret is I wish the content would have been better, that it could have been appreciated more. Um, it was bad. Like not, a, you know, looking back, not a great, not a great decision in the moment, but. You would be shocked. So the last few years of playing, you know, being the oldest guy on the team for the last couple of years, wherever I was, the amount of kids that would be like, come up to me, like they'd earn, like they would like build up their like nerves to come up and say, and they'd be like, Hey dude, I was in high school or I was a freshman in high school when I first heard that song in my football locker room. And like, now that I'm playing with you is the coolest thing. Like that's <laughs> what they remember. And I was like, I'm not sure if that's cool or not. Uh -huh. Like I went like, I've done some other shit, you know, but they all remember, you know, they all remember pre, they're like, we used to pregame to that in my college dorm before we would go out at night. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> did, I know. did any of like the rookies ever come up to you and be like, Hey, Greg, like is, are your lyrics true? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, is that true? <laughs> um, all right. We'll, 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 we'll flip it back to you, George. Uh, so wait, is there a charity aspect of the tight end you? There is. I'm glad you asked. Go yeah, ahead, because I, I, I just like I, dawned I'm on me. That, yeah, that George, you just invited a bunch of dudes to come and drink at your house in Nashville. Well, no, kind of, <laughs> but instead, so like that's why we got involved with sponsors so we can you know pay for guys to like stay here, take care of them. We also raise a ton of money to give to local charities in Nashville, which has been really fun. Uh, you know, we've been able to work with Levi's. Uh, Bud Light's been huge for us. Like they're giving us free Bud Light for all the events. Tell that them we're what doing. you're doing after. We'll bleep out that. By the way, we're a Coors we'll podcast now. Mountains are Thank blue. Thank you much, very much. Bud Light seltzer, all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> but we have Bridgestones coming in to bring the boys and girls club in, and we're gonna like just play some drill, like go through some drills. With them, body throw armor. Yeah, body armor. Love you that. can say yeah. that we're body armor body guys. Armor. Yep, you can say well, that. So they they were Bud the Light. first sponsors. So when we were kicking it around. To George's point, we were kicking it around, and as the numbers started growing, we're like, "All right, you know, we're, you know, we got to, you know, bring in fifty guys, put them up in a hotel, feed them, transportation." You know, me and George and Kelsey are nice guys, and we've made a good coin, but you know, that shit's expensive. You know, you start bringing in guys, and they want to bring their wives to dinner, and things added up. So we reached out to a handful. George mentioned all those guys. Body Armor was the first, you know, the first group that said, "You know, we're all in," and and they've been awesome, and you know outfitting guys with you know the drinks and the, the gear and the equipment and you know all those and then the the point that that the way the whole thing came together was super cool is after we pay for all the expenses thanks for partners like them all the remaining money we've partnered with the nashville boys and girls club they're going to come out and do a little camp and we're going to make a contribution to them you know so we're going to have 
you know, all this leftover money, George and I and Kelsey, we make no money from this. All the remaining money that doesn't go towards giving the guys a great experience for the, for the three days, all is being given away to charity, both locally and national in Nashville and also throughout the country. So we couldn't, you know, without those sponsors, you know, especially, you know, with Bud Light, sorry. No, um, you know, body Bud armor, Light. sorry, mm -hmm. body mm -hmm. armor, um, Levi's and Bridgestone, like all those Muggsy. groups coming together to understand like what we're trying to build here. Um, a lot of other people are going to benefit as a result. Yeah, that, that's sick. And the, in the, the kid aspect of like kids coming out and maybe this will be like a, a little foreplay to to the real sappy stuff we're about to do. But kids coming out and like playing football with a bunch of pros, you can never get enough of that. Have you guys had a moment yet? Uh, maybe not you, George, but Greg, I'm sure you've had it where have you have you had a moment where you were maybe at a camp with a kid and then that kid like ended up being in the NFL or maybe playing college football and like you were able to be like get back connected with him like holy shit like you know you you had an impact on my life like on social media I've had people send me like a picture and say hey I met you at the Gatorade camp in 2008 when I was a sophomore in high school or a middle school kid and you know I just got a scholarship to you know wherever um, you know, I'm going to play football next year at Iowa. Like I've had, you know, those kind of stories that are just, you know, awesome. And, you know, I, I don't remember meeting him, but DK Metcalf, I played with his father in Chicago and he says we met in the locker room one time, which I'm sure we did. And then last year, me and him were teammates, you know? So like those kind of stories are awesome. Both of people that, you know, and also just people that along the way you kind of rub shoulders with, but you know, George being so tied in down in Nashville and having great connections with them, we're going to have 50, 50 or 75 or so kids come out on um, on Thursday. And in the afternoon, we're going to do like an hour long. All the tight ends will be out there. We're going to set up drills and do like a fun, free clinic for all those kids to come on out. And we're going to take like an hour pause from our itinerary of tight end you to kind of spend, you know, spend the afternoon with those kids before we get back into the classroom sessions and the video prep and all that stuff that we're going to do with the group. So it's going to be super cool. So how does that work when you're going to be kind of teaching some of your competitors? Like, uh, I, I know for you, George, like you're going to be playing against these guys this year and probably you too, Greg, cause you always do that thing where like three quarters of the way through the year, people are like, Oh, I bet Greg Olson can come back and make a roster. Um, so you might, <laughs> you might be out there again next year. Like, is there any sort of uh, like competitive instinct that takes over where you're like, I want to teach this guy, but Maybe not teach him everything that I know. Oh, I mean, dude, when one tight end succeeds, like when we're all succeeding, then everyone gets to benefit off of each other, you know, whether that's from guys playing well and getting contracts so the tight end position gets paid more and more. I mean, like a big part of that, tight ends have been making under $10 million forever. And like we just kind of broke through that. But we're still, like Greg said, like we're still getting paid less than a lot of the you know, other positions. And I, I, I mean, I feel like the tight end does a lot. I mean, if you look at the last – 10 Super Bowls. I think every team that's won is at a down, like a very, very talented tight end. Yep. So like it has to do with winning Super Bowls. So, I mean, I think that's the most important thing. So you might as well pay the tight ends. And, uh, you know, I just kind of want that number to keep going up. And like I said, like when tight ends come together, you can learn. And, you know, I mean, what's more important like Kyle Pitts is like, like I said, he's going to be really good, but the NFL is faster than college. And if he can sit in a room for two days and learn from guys like Greg Olson, me, Travis Kelsey, Mercedes Lewis, uh, Luke Stocker, like you got vets in there and you can learn a thing or two. I mean, like, it's just going to, I mean, take guys' career and hopefully, like, just uh, on an uphill tra trajectory, all the time doing that, it's all good. Are you going to teach a class, George, where it's like, this is just how you be a beast and throw people off of you? And they just play yeah, that I mean, clip of the Saints, is. the Saints clip where you just had, like, four Saints on you in the dome and you were just tossing them everywhere? I, I'm going to talk about Yak, you know, yards after catch, mm -hmm. and I'm also going to talk about uh, run, run blocking and pass pro. Those okay. are my three topics. Okay. Okay. What about do you do like a, a breakdown where it's just block day is one specific day of the week? Like, hey, we're just gonna basically focus on the part of our game that's just throwing people out of the club today. That's I mean, like that like I said, that that's my like I got a thirty minute session on Friday and it's all dedicated to run blocking and pass pro. I'm gonna throw this out there. Next year we should be invited and we should give a class on how tight ends like, you know, be the most charismatic guys on your teams. Do interviews with part of my take, and hopefully that will help, you know, raise your your star and maybe get you a couple dollars more. I mean, I'm in for that. Okay. Yeah, it'll just be called how to get on part of my take, yeah. and then you just have to write your phone number down and yeah. hand it to us, and then you can leave. And then just say something super, <laughs> super like, 
is something that we can put on a headline and we're good to go. Yeah, wear a part of my take shirt on Hard Knocks. Is Luke Wilson going to be there? Uh oh. I invited him. Did you? Mm. We- not, not the actor. No, no. Luke Wilson with two L's. Yeah, yep. yeah. Okay, good. Whew. Yeah, I was his team. We played together last year in Seattle. I invited him. Hopefully and. He comes. He's I probably, think he's like locked. I think he's like locked in Canada, right? Yeah. The borders and shit are shut down. That's yeah. true. Damn it. Um, I think yeah. we would probably waive our no former tight end experience waiver clause if you guys wanted to come down next year, pack your cleats, get in shape, uh, yeah. we'll put you through camp, and we'll put you and we'll see if you guys no, can no, do it. No, yeah. no, I wanted to show up and do like a thirty minute Zoom and get paid to Wait. go to Nashville. I didn't. I didn't want to do or PowerPoint. Sorry. We can do that. We yeah, can do that. I didn't want to do, do any a- athletic stuff. Maybe That's... I'll, you know, one of the kids. I can we can pat we can point out to one of the kids and be like, "All right, you're a podcaster. You're not a tight end. Like, just <laughs> let's cut to the chase here. You're a blogger. We're scouting. You're not a tight end. Like, we're, we're just gonna be nice to you. You know." <laughs> Vic, I got, got um. We forgot to talk about uh, Charmin is also one of our sponsors, and mm. they're sending down two life size bears. Really? For Thursday. Yes, and they're gonna throw toilet paper at people. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, that's good. That's good. Really? Yeah, dude, we're killing it. We're killing it. Tight end U is gonna be. Did you guys an in- annual tradition? Did you guys invite Blake Bortles? Blake of the year. He's yeah, got no, good hands. Yeah, he. I mean, people say that he would Dog. be an awesome tight end, including himself. He does have good hands. Okay. All right. I did not invite. Think him. about that. All right. Let's finish with this, uh, Greg. I do Greg. actually want to talk to you about this because. Uh, it was a story that a lot of people, you know, saw online. It was very emotional. Your son, TJ, just got a heart transplant. Um, I basically, every time the videos came up, I had to like, I had to not watch it because it made me so emotional. Obviously, it's been crazy time last few months, you know, yep. for your family. How is he doing? And um, what has, I, this is a terrible question, but like, what has it been like? I, I can't even imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been wild. So, I mean, since the day he was born, you know, we, we knew prior to him being born that he was going to be born with a long road to hoe. He um, was in essence born with only half of a heart. So he literally only had one right ventricle. Um, if left untreated, you know, you die. Um, so he was a, he had three open heart surgeries before his second birthday. And in essence, he lived with half of a heart, which is kind of like our play on why we wear these shirts a lot. And he lived with what they call a single ventricle. He had one chamber of his heart and, he lived his life like that and he was doing really well um lived a fairly standard quality of life for the most part had some restrictions and then about a little over a month ago my wife and i just noticed he was he wasn't himself he was getting really bogged down we thought maybe he was just tired so after a few days we took him into the hospital and within hours he was admitted into the icu in uh, heart failure and uh, they said his heart just was no longer able to keep up it was failing and there was no reversing it and we began at that day we began the process of getting him listed for to be a heart transplant recipient so he was eight years old he's still eight years old um and we started that process he was listed and we didn't know how long that that process was going to take we were and we were in the icu for the entire duration of waiting for the heart um and a big reason we share those videos and fortunate to be able to talk about it, you know, on a platform like this is because there's so many people out there who have these stories, right. And they're sitting in their hospital room and they're by themselves and they're alone. And they, they feel like they're the only one in the world doing this. And we just want to shine a little light that like, you don't only have to share your great moments, right? Like you don't only have to share when you're throwing a cool tight end thing with George Kittle and you're having a blast talking shit with you guys. Like all of us have lives that at times suck, right? Like shit happens. And this was one of them. So we, we hunkered down, not knowing, not knowing how long the process would be by the grace of God and him being in certain criteria of size and blood type and antibody rejections and liver fail, like all these billion factors that go into this algorithm of qualifying you. We were notified um, that he would that he would be after about a little over about 10 days. We were notified that there was a heart match. And on June 4th, TJ underwent an open heart surgery and uh, he came home on Wednesday wow. and he's been home. He's been home now for the weekend. And I, I, I mean, we could go, we could have a two hour talk on just what that process entails, but it's uh, it's remarkable what, what he's been through and what these doctors can do. I mean, they literally cut his chest open. They took his heart out and they flew in on a private jet 
another heart in a cooler, literally on a cool in a cooler of ice, reconnect it and start it back up. That's unreal. I incredible. mean, it's it's, it's it, wild. It, yeah, and it's uh, you know uh, anyone who's got kids like I like I said I tried to watch the video and I think you don't really understand it until you have a kid of your own and you're like you know you do anything literally anything and like to go through that. Fuck, man. It was – I'm just so happy he's good. And what what's like – is he going to live a, a somewhat normal life now with with his new heart? They said his, his immediate life right now, once he recovers, it's about a year process until he's about, like, done. He's on, like, serious immunosuppressants so that the body doesn't reject the heart. So, like, there's no, like, going out and about. It's almost like he has to live in COVID for, like, yeah. another year, which is kind of weird that we actually know what that – you know, know how to live with him for the time being. But um, it, it's about a year process until he can like venture back out into school settings and big groups and you know act, reallocate himself, acclimate himself back out into life. But um, you know the the one downside to getting a heart transplant at such a young age, and typically why they try to prolong having to get it, is the hearts don't last forever. Um, right now, hearts last like give or take twenty years. So when you're eight, it takes you to twenty eight as the medicine stands today, mm -hmm. you know, and you got to do it again. So that's where things get a little dicey, but you know, every year the, their ability to push off rejection, keep your body, you know, you know, in coordination with your heart and, you know, keeping things working gets better and better and better. So we try not to think of that. We have to do this again in 20 years. We hope that it's 50 years, 30, whatever it is. And, um, we just are thankful for every day that, he's home you yeah know, like the little just he's home right and we have him and we're gonna love it every day that we have him and you know the hardest i'll tell you i'll be honest with you guys the hardest part the hardest part to rationalize is like the mix the dual emotions of getting the call that your son's life's going to be saved because without this heart he's, he's not going to be able to live he's you know he was on medicine that was the only reason his heart pumped you know hooked up he would wear like a backpack and um it was all around the clock and that was what would let his heart failing his failing heart work right but the reality is is right now in our stage of medicine someone else has to have a tragedy to allow them to be able to donate a heart and it's not just someone who dies they have to die like in certain ways to make their organs ability to be donated and yeah it's just a really really hard hard right you know at the moment you're having a sense of relief that your day has here at that very moment in time, someone else somewhere in the country is having like their worst day ever. Yeah. Right. But, so yeah, it's so hard. Yeah. But it also is a good reminder that if you're not an organ donor, you know, you should, yep. you should be an organ donor. Absolutely. Everyone out there, like it's yep. a really, really important thing. And it's not, you know, I think yep. there used to be a time when everyone's like, well, they're going to harvest my organs. No, that's not no. how it works. If something tragically happened to you, you could save someone else's life. And that's like you get a story like this with TJ and it's it's the best, man. It's yeah. unreal. And how about this? We don't know anything about our organ donor. They're not allowed to share any personal information. We don't know the age, the gender, the location, but they donated seven organs. Wow. So seven families, you know, you start talking, you know, eyes and or, you know, liver and pancreas and kidneys and heart and lungs. You know, seven lives. So six other families like us have their, you know, hypothetically, hopefully everything went well, have their son, daughter, husband, whatever, because of one person. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a super easy step that everyone can take. Just when you're at the yep. DMV, you just check a box. Yeah. And yep. that's all that it takes. You can be, you know, a world dif of difference. Like you said, for seven different families, that's incredible. Um, yep. How How is he doing? Like mentally, uh, are his spirits up? I imagine that for an eight-year-old, this has got to be, you know, a, an extremely scary thing. Scary doesn't even really begin to describe it. But how has he handled this? And are his spirits good? His spirits are awesome. I wish I could show you guys, like, my wife sent me a picture. I had to take my other. So I brought him home from the hospital Wednesday after being there for a month, brought him home Wednesday and Thursday had to take my other son to a baseball tournament for the last three days in Charleston, South Carolina. So my wife and our parents and all them stayed here with them to take care. And she sent me a video of him like jogging down our driveway, like back to our house. And, you know, it's just, it's mind blowing with how resilient these kids are. I mean, if it was any one of us, we'd yeah. be just like pity party, yep. negative, 
your world sucks. And he's, he hasn't had a bad day. You know, one, he had like one moment of weakness the morning we woke him up to take him to surgery, like the, the day, right? He just broke down and he's like, I don't want a new heart, dad. I don't want a new heart, mom. And we're like, that's, you know, make they see him say that, right? Is mm-hmm. tough. The day before he's playing air hockey, right? right? And they, right, it's, he said, but you know, but you don't, you know, you don't have much of a vote, bud. You have no choice, right? So it's, he's been, he's been unbelievable. He's yeah. home. He's happy. He wants to go for pizza. He wants to go watch his brother's baseball team practice. You know, we're like, all right, bud, we'll, we got time. We'll, we'll get there. But he's, uh, for everything that he's been through, he's doing awesome. It, it is true. Kids are so fucking resilient. I mean, I would sprain yeah. my ankle and I'd hand, hand someone my license and be like, go ahead. I'm an organ donor. Take it off. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, I'm happy so we did true. this at the end though, because I wouldn't have been able to handle the rest. So let's end yeah. with this, uh, George, you're so fathers, we're taping this on father's day. Did you yeah. write your dad a 20 page letter for father's day? Like he writes to you? Uh, no, I took him to Miami and I put him on, I put him on a beach and he swam in the ocean all day for eight hours while you got your tattoo. No, he came with me to the tattoo <laughs> and he just sat there. The whole time he was doing the tight in new agenda, getting the schedule set out. Like, shout out my dad for being like he's the G. Him and our marketing guys have gotten the whole thing done. But yeah, Rubicon, no, I think- Rubicon Town. They should get a shout out. Yeah, Rubicon, shout out Coors Light, Peter Raskin, Peter Kaskin. That's our guy. But I just put him on each of my for the last three days. Okay, Been awesome. All right, so that's good, son. Now he should part of tight end you, and I don't want to tell you guys how to do it. But it would be great if your dad wrote a specialized letter to every single tight end on their way out the door. You'd a lot like for each individual person gets mm-hmm. their own. Yes, From, it has to happen. Yes, if yeah. I don't get one, I'm not doing it next year. Yeah, be like, <laughs> listen, I've only he known you for. Know me. Yeah, he I've only know. known you for three days, but I love you like a son, and I really want to see you see, like do the whole thing. <laughs> Remember that time uh, on Tuesday when we first met? <laughs> the connection i felt the connection yeah so, are, are you should be in charge of giving out the awards are you guys doing awards at the end of camp no i don't think we are but that's a good idea for next year yeah little like yeah, like, like t-ball awards. trophy awards yeah. would be funny for a bunch of like professional tight ends <laughs> oh no here, here's that what one. you do you give everybody a participation trophy and you see who throws them away yeah and the people that don't throw them away they Man. actually they lose the camp they get cut yes yeah. wow they- <laughs> That's that's actually. A, I hope you can edit that out of this, so when we so we don't spoil the surprise, because I think we should actually do that. Yeah. And Greg, are we going to be seeing you on TV this year? You are. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be calling George's games. I'm gonna be giving him so much love. It's gonna be crazy. I love it. I love it. I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be calling games with Fox, and uh, I'm not. I am not gonna be coming out of retirement. I'm completely and utterly done. I've, sure. I've set a record for how many times I've broken and ruptured my feet. So I'm I'm full time dad and part time broadcaster. Okay, be yeah. nice to the Bears because I know you're going to get some Bears games. No, I like the Bears. I, yeah. I once that regime left. Yeah. Like I I I'll be honest. When I left, like I wanted them to lose every game, obviously. <laughs> but then, like once they all moved on and they went to like the Tressman and all these guys, I actually thought the Bears. I'm not gonna lie. I was pissed at the Bears. You want to hear a Bear story? Yeah. Yeah. We'll finish with this. So last we'll finish with this last story. So last year. I got cut. I was going into free agency after the Super Bowl, after the Panthers cut me, and was talking to a bunch of different teams, trying to figure out you know what the opportunities were and you know whatnot. And I talked to Matt Nagy, called me with the GM, and we talked for like forty five minutes on the phone. And you know they're asking me questions about routes and what kind of systems have you played in? Would you be comfortable with you know? code words versus digits what did you do on your backside routes what was your leverage reads how did you know all this stuff so i hang up i'm like i said to my wife i'm like babe i think they really like me and want to sign me how cool would it be if like life came full circle and we could finish up my career back in chicago that would be so sick right so i got myself like all excited they never long story short they're like we don't have enough money we don't have this so i go and sign in seattle Day one of fucking free agency, they signed Jimmy Graham. Yeah. <laughs> I said, what the fuck? Well, they, they also, 
Yeah. They paid him more than they were gonna than they than I wanted. They also like want like I think Ryan Pace was just there was a time there where the Bears had like eleven tight ends. So if there was any tight end, he was like, I just want to talk to him. Like I just want to I want to get on the phone with this guy. So I I literally said to my wife they they and again I love Jimmy. Don't get me wrong, it has nothing to do with Jimmy. I was like when I was when they signed Jimmy, I was like those guys. It was like they used me. It was like they took me on like a really cheap date, picked my brain for everything I knew, and then they just like gave me an Uber. Yeah. And like sent me my way. Nice. Not surprised. So, Not surprised. Nice. Um, but all right. Anyway. Everyone, uh, th- or, or Greg and George, thank you so much. Tight end use is happening this week. Going to be great for charity for the kids. It's also going to be great for all the tight ends. We'll be there next year, guaranteed. Um, and thank you guys. We really appreciate it. Mm. Thank you, boys. Appreciate you guys. You yeah. guys are awesome. Thanks, guys. Good to see you All guys. Right. The Gregs are brought to you by Shady Rays. Spring weather and longer days are here to stay, which is why you need the official shades of part of my take, Shady Rays. Whether you're one of the thousands who rock their shades daily or you're new to the brand, you don't want to miss this epic deal. We're kicking the spring season off with a holiday-level deal for part of my take listeners. Just go to ShadyRays.com, use promo code PMT35, get 35% off your entire order. Pick the styles that fit your needs. Stock up on high-quality polarized sunglasses for those trips to the lake or a much-needed extended vacation. You can also try Shady Ray's Blue Light Glasses, their hottest collection featuring a PMT fan-favorite style, the classic timber with blue light blocking lenses for the indoors and the outdoors. We love Shady Ray's, and it's summertime. That means that you're probably going to be losing some sunglasses here and there. So not only will you get Shady Ray's best deal of the season, but you get their year-round lost and broken replacement warranty. It's one of the best warranties in all of eyewear. If your shades are lost or if they're broken for any reason, they're going to replace them with a brand new pair. It's almost like they never left your face. So if you want to stock up on Shady Ray's for the warm weather, now is the best time to do it. You won't find this level of deal anywhere else but right here on Part of My Take. Go to ShadyRays.com, use promo code PMT35, get 35% off your entire order when you shop with code PMT35. You can get a pair of polarized shades for as low as $31. We'll drink to that. Redeemable only at ShadyRays.com, where you can find their newest and their best selections. Okay, what do you got, Jake? First, tri- first game-ending triple play since the Phillies turned one against the Mets on August 23rd, 2009. This was the 27th game-ending triple play. So oh, it's far mm. from correct. It's not even close. Not even close. I'm only seeing nine, Jake. Nine game-ending oh. triple plays. Wow. There's Seems one, uh, Chris Sabo, sunglass, Rex Specs King, Chris Sabo, 91. Yeah, I see 27 via Sarah Lang's. Is it Mike Francis a bit? All right. (laughs) Keep going. I want want you to keep going, PFT. Well, there was one back in uh, 1978, Ron Say. He was batting Ken (laughs) Force as a pitcher. It was the Dodgers and the Astros. Back when the Astros were in the National League at that point. And then before that, you got the Kansas City Royals and and the Baltimore (laughs) Orioles. Old Tippy Martinez was on the bump going up against John Waith in 1977. They were down 7-5. Walk-off triple play there. Then we got Phil Gagliano. Uh, oh, he, with the St. Louis Cardinals <laughs> at the Cincinnati Reds. Don Notbart was the pitcher. Oh, and then you got to take it way back to 1966. Guess who was pitching that one, Big Cat? Sandy uh, Koufax. Little, little... Oil Cam Boyd. Nope. A little pitcher known by Tommy John. Oh! Ah. Yeah, Tommy John was twirling a gym. Recurring guest? Oh, not recurring guest. No. Tommy John, recurring guest? Dr. Uh, James Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Who fixed Kyle Schwarber's knee? Yep. Full circle. Shout out. Uh, all right. Monday reading. Yeah, so this is a little different, not really a funny Monday reading, uh, a little bit sadder, but we do like talk about our lives on our show. This is going on with me. So this was a, a text uh, that I sent to PFT and Big Cat earlier. It said, I'm talking to Dave today. Rhea already texted him and told him. So if it's cool with you guys at the very end of the show, I'll mention what's going on with us, that we're broken up, etc., and that we're cool. Moving on to separate apartments and moving on for now, obviously super sad, but probably better long term. It's tough. So, yeah. So, uh, you and Rhea are... We're broken up. Broken up. Yes, yeah, it's been going on for, like... I mean, we've been kind of separated for, like, a month. It happened over COVID. We just kind of, I don't know, just lost lost the fire a little bit. Kind of a situation where we became roommates and not really, like, romantic or mm-hmm. whatever. And we just kind of realized that our apartment was up. We had different opinions on where we wanted to live and stuff. And we just, you know, figured it was better for both of us if we just kind of moved on. Well, spin Sucks. zone, you're getting hot. You're getting Sing, a six-pack. Single Hank yep. this summer. Yeah, your singies for the summer. All right, so just let's do, like, a couple quick questions so that way people aren't like, oh, wonder yep. what this, wonder this. 
Uh, number one, how much blame should we give Jake? Zero blame. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, this is you know people. That happened. Like, we were. It yeah, was already. Right. We had already. It already happened before that even happened. It okay. Was, okay. Um, question number two: Who should we be mean to? You or, or Rhea? No one to be mean to. It was no one's. No okay. one's. No one's fault. It's one of those things where she just. You know. There is a big age difference. Uh, we, like I said, we took like this has been going on for a month. We kind of separated, and during that time, I thought about it, and you know, kind of realized like we started dating. She was nineteen, living at home by herself. She's. I've been single. You know, working for Barcelona in Boston on the Dixie tour, like the first year of part of my take. Like I know what's out there. I know what it's like. I've lived the life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she's obviously like younger, had a tough time in Corona and has just never really been out there. So I don't necessarily blame her for, you know, wanting to like see what's out there and stuff. You're only young once. Um, and I'm just at a place where I'm not really trying to like go crazy and party and have fun and stuff. I'm older and just kind of trying to relax. So very mature. Yeah. I mean, very it's, it's, mature. It's, it's, it's very sad. It's been, it's been a tough month, but I do think, you know, I'm just happy it's not like a, a toxic or like dramatic ending or anything like that. So we're still, we're, we're, we're everyone's being nice to Rhea. We're supporting Rhea. She's still a coworker of, of ours. We like Rhea. So it's not like that. It's, uh, this is for our younger, uh, listeners. Sometimes this happens. Yes. And it's no one's fault. And it actually can just be a split. I know that's crazy. And it's actually healthy to deal with it this way, as opposed to just, Ignoring it. Right. Hoping things get better. And did you consider trying to have a child to save your relationship? No, no, no. I think well, there, there was. Well, here was, Normie. Here was, well, Norman. So, Norman, people probably went in that. Yep. Norman, when we got Norman or when she got Norman, it was like I said basically, I don't think we should get him. It's a lot of responsibility. And, and if you do want to get him, you kind of have to take on that responsibility. So, she did. She found him. She went and picked him up. She, like, mm-hmm. took him to the vet, did all his meals. So, it was always, it was always her dog. That was never right. a question. It's just, like, a, a sad – it's a sad part of a much sadder situation. But, you know – He's going to stay out of the podcast now because right. it is Rhea's dog. So, we're going to respect that. Right. So, we're not going to bring up Normie. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I, I do – I am – obviously, I, you know, listeners and stuff, you can't control them. They're probably going to troll whatever. But I am asking you guys uh, – I, got, I know. I know the situation will come up where you want to make a joke, and I the would only joke it I want to make is I want to make Jake feel uncomfortable. Is that okay? I no. I mean, I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. I can't make Jake feel uncomfortable. No, I mean, it's not Jake's fault. I feel bad. He's gonna he's feel just terrible too as it is. Yeah, he's gonna. He's gonna. The only thing that that just a feel little, really can bad. Him, can I make him feel a little uncomfortable? Hank is my podcast brother. That, <laughs> I want him to be happy. Oh my god! <laughs> Hear that? Are you the older brother, Jake? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, that's it. That was good. That's all I wanted. That was enough. That was enough uncomfortable, Jake. Did you? Right. Can I? I'll just ask this one time. Did you teach her how to put the ice cube on? I told her about it. I never, I never really went through the Parting process. Gift. Though. Okay. But yeah, no, uh, Hank. We we obviously uh, have your back. Yep. Everyone. I think the AWLs will actually surprise you here in uh, being like, hey, you know, he said his piece. Let's all just chill out with it. But, yeah, that's adults. Mm-hmm. Adult things happen, and uh, we we like Rhea. We're not going to stop liking Rhea. We love Hank. We're not going to stop loving Hank. Mm-hmm. And, Jake, you're a good boy, too. And, uh, you know, a great way to maybe, you know, get through some of the lonelier times might be to get a companion, some sort of cat, uh, make great roommates. A, a, or a, a roommate? No, no roommates, no cats what for now. roommates about- with dogs? Nope, definitely nope. not. Uh, definitely <laughs> you, not. I you would, living I would, with Billy would, would actually Philly, be the meanest thing of all yeah, time. Yeah, Philly's dreams would come true within like <laughs> probably a week. <laughs> <laughs> he killed himself. Why? Because he broke up with his girlfriend? No, because he had to live with Billy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's it is sad. I obviously love yeah. Rhea still though. We're so we're yeah. we're cool. It's not you know it's nothing mm-hmm. nothing too dramatic. I think when people hear that type of news, they're like, oh, what happened? But it was more of just you know it was a long. A long time coming, kind of, and it's just probably it's probably better for both of us this way. And shout out you for uh, giving me almost a heart attack because I think my inner dad now kicks in when you texted me and PFT last week. And you're like, "Hey, can I talk to you guys real quick before you leave?" And I was like, "Okay, someone died," and I was like, "I, I sprinted. I haven't sprinted in <laughs> five years. I sprinted to the studio from my desk." Yeah, because we don't get the we don't send those text messages yeah. to each other. No, guys. I mean, yeah, we don't. That's yeah. what it's, it's more like. I know, I know, we don't really. We did talk about it. It I was kind of a quitting. recurring thing over the years. So it was more just like for the record, because obviously, like going forward, you know, 
I'm not going to be in a relationship with a dog anymore, so it's more just to have it on the record. I thought you were quitting to go to Spotify to do the Caller Daddy Uh, podcast. I wish. And uh, I walked in the room, and Big Cat's, uh, the first thing he said was, Hank's quitting. Yeah. And I didn't know if he was serious or not for that second. (laughs) No, I I had the scare when he he texted us. All right, Billy, you got to follow that. Billy, there was actually great feedback from Billy's recap on Friday. No, I'm serious. No pressure. No pressure. I got to follow it up. Anyway, Being positive, we're positive vibes only podcast. This has been a pretty heavy show, if you think about it. Oh, with the Greg yeah, Olson. Yeah, well, the Greg yeah. Olson. But that's the thing where it's like it has been sad, and then it's like you hear stories like that, and you're instantly like, all right, life, life is not yeah. that bad. Right, this could be worse. You know, everything's gonna beautiful. be all right. Everybody, gas up, Hank. Right, gas up our boy. Yeah, gas up our boy. Your beard looks amazing today. Thank you, Billy. Yeah. I appreciate um, it. You look taller. Did you get I'm taller? gonna find something. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Uh, you pronounce every word. You actually did better with pronunciation today than Jake did. It's a fact. Best name. Hank, I've always been. <laughs> I've always been um, jealous of how you're able to ha- handle your weed. Thank you. That's taken a long time for me to get to that point. Yeah. So. No, I have. I've been like that guy. Can he can blaze? If you and like not be like you can do it. Like I blaze and I just fucking lose my mind. If it's ADD. You didn't respond to my email. I wouldn't have this job. Mm. That's about you, Jake. Sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm thanking him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done so making Jacob yeah, come. That was a mistake. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for pointing you out st- my mistakes. So you, him responding to that email started everything, the wheels in motion. <laughs> the Chinese <laughs> food order tonight was fire. It was really good. <laughs> One of my best. Thank you. Can, but he Liam, made it. Can you make that clip for me? The, I just love having Billy back. He really is like the bro. Chinese food order was fire. Yo, come on, and you're know, really I good. At, you're really good at balance sports too. I love, I love having you back. You haven't like, crashed genuinely. in like a year. Ah, uh, no, he crashed uh, a couple weeks ago. Would you call it balance, balance sports? sports? <laughs> you're good at balancing on things. <laughs> well, oh, by the way, Tony hey, Hawk is one of the best balance sporters of all. He time. is. I'm, I'm a foot based sports guy myself. Gymnastics. Uh, Hank actually has really pretty eyes. Whoa. Hank works his ass off, too. Yeah, literally. But have you ever looked in Hank's oh, eyes? Oh, you know what? This is actually a good time. Let's do this right now real quick. This is also a serious thing. Uh, July 4th schedule, so we're not going to have a show on Monday. July 5th is uh, Monday. We're not going to have a show because we're not going to do a show on, on that July 4th. And Hank and Liam are going to take the week off vacation-wise. No jokes. This is not a joking thing. My everyone, sister's getting married. Every, well, also, everyone needs some Shout time to... to Maddie and Drew. Yep, everyone needs Max B., uh, everyone needs some time to to uh, take off, so they're gonna take it. We're gonna have two other guys, Youngstown Bob and Jake, are gonna co- not our Jake, another Jake are gonna Laser come in, Jake. and they're gonna uh, guest produce on Wednesday and Friday. So let's get ahead of that. No jokes about it. Liam and Hank work their fucking asses off. When we finish the podcast every night, they're still here for fucking four hours later, so they deserve some time off. So there, there'll be a no joke zone. Fair, fair. Fair. Yep. Sometimes PFT and I forget that like we can just sit down and put on the mics and produce and put out a show, and then it's over when we right, leave. Yeah. Right. So we have to we have to remind ourselves that it's a lot more that goes into it. Um, all right, Billy, let's do it. Um, I think that the biggest thing that's going to come out of tight end you is that all the tight ends are going to get man bums. Mm. Okay. Think think about it. I like Kittle that. got Hawkinson to do it, so I think mm. that's going to spread. Okay. Um, you have to. There, there has to be like a certain level of physical imposition that you have to carry about you in order to pull off a man bun. Yeah. Like I can't do a man bun. Gareth Bale has the worst man. Did you see his yeah, man bun today? Yeah. I want to cut his head off. Yeah. His entire face every time I see that. Yeah. It's. It, I think it's one or the other. It's got to be. You got to be a really like imposing physical guy, like a tight end, or you have to be a small, slender guy, and people are like. What's his deal? Artistic, like, like he could do something to me. Trevor, Lo- what. Trevor Lawrence's brother could yes. pull off a, a man bun. There's no in between. No. Like if I had a man bun, it would be the worst man bun of all. Time. Yes. Um, and Why'd then, you laugh at that? Because so uh, because you're it's <laughs> it insane would, how accurate it would, it, is. it would be terrible. <laughs> they should do more pool games in the Olympics. Have like Olympic sharks and minnows and Marco Polo. Demi. Okay, like Marco Polo, real would be sick. real water sports. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's it. Perfect. Okay. Um, the lost raptors are the size of a chicken. <laughs> Billy has graded himself a perfect. <laughs> perfect. 57. All right. 99. 69. 18. 8. 6. The lost raptors are the size of a chicken. Is that true? Frog yeah, dinosaurs. Tiny. Frauds. 64. No one had 64. Is that a new one? N64. One time. 
Ooh. One time, what date? I like. I'm kind of low key in a weird way obsessed with the lottery statistics. December first, twenty twenty. Wow! Wow! Like what were we doing that? December first, twenty twenty. What day of the week was that? What NFL week was that? That's probably week twelve. Somewhere around there, maybe yeah, week twelve or thirteen. That's Derrick well, Henry right? probably had two hundred yards that that day. December. I think it was week fifteen. What? December. Sorry, that was December. It yeah. was a Tuesday, Jake. It was December twelfth, or no? Wow, Jake. I mean, week twelve. He's just he's going through a lot. Hank. Love you guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried about Jake. <laughs>